Flex Lewis here, straight out of the land. Episode 14, 14 straight out of the land. We are joined by the legend, four time Honor Classic champion. I would say, yeah. and people would probably say, arguably, we're in front of this sentence, but in my eyes, no question. The Uncrowned Mr. Olympia. Absolutely. Thanks. You know what? Um, what's more important than trophies and all that is just the respect of your peers. Mm. That's something so hard to get, just the respect of your peers, because we're all so incredibly competitive, and we want to beat each other, and we want to do well and all that. So, I mean, I don't even know where some of my Olympia medallions are, sadly. Um, you know, I look at everybody's, like, pictures, like, you know, I look at Jay's pictures, how – <clears throat> he has them all like nicely all on a wall and mine are scattered all over the place in a garage, stuff like that. So, but you know, my point is I didn't compete for trophies. I competed for money. You know, I came from just poor, just being ass poor, homeless, uh, you know, at times hungry all the times. Um, so it was a mean for me to make money. And yeah. I know back then a lot of people were angry. Like, you know, how could you say that? I'm like, no, it's a job. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, oh, I'd do this for free. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. And and if you did, you don't know your value. You know, we deserve to be paid. But, you know, just like you, Flex, uh, if we had went to college for as long as we applied ourselves to our sport, including being an amateur, we'd have like a triple doctor's degree or whatever like that. So how can you not, you know, understand your value? But I competed based on ability to make money, you know, um, if Ronnie was there, I knew it would be a battle, and I would look at, okay, this is second-place prize money, and if he wasn't there, I'm looking at first-place prize money. That's how I took care of myself, and I, I paid my bills. You know, I'm, I'm incredibly happy of what I've done, but the respect that I get from my peers and just fans of saying that means way more than, than having an Olympia trophy, even though I'm fully aware it would have changed my ability to make money because just that title, it doesn't matter if people hate you or not, they respect that title, so that hurts a lot. But, you know, um, I think respect is probably the greatest thing um, because regardless whether you're straight, gay, or have antennas coming from your head or Mars or from from Mars or Venus, we just want to be respected. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be respected for who we are and our character, regardless of our color or our financial status. That's truly what. So to have you say that and to hear people say that, you know, just touches me because it's like, wow, I earned their respect. And that's difficult. You know, so thank you. I think in the circles <clears throat> that from the top all the way to, you know, even the newbies coming in, every would presume from the hype, from the respect you have in this sport, that you have the title. Mm. So it goes, in my eyes, even though, again, you don't have that, that number, mm-hmm. you, you've, you've won it. Yeah. I, yeah. If, you know, you could say, like, if... Ronnie wasn't there or anything like that, but um, I think all these guys were thinking, fuck, if Flex wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, I think there's, I mean, listen, Flex, growing up, it was you, Dorian, the priest. I'm trying to think of my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. On my we're wall. kind of deep there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you didn't, the wall. you didn't look at us while you were having sex or anything, did you? No, you no, no. Okay. This this is, this is, <laughs> he was telling you what was in his dreams. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> where is this going? This is the, uh, no, I was going to say something. I fucking sound by you. It haunt me for the rest of my life. No, but in, in all truth, you know, it was that era. It was, it was magical, you know, and the VHS videos yeah. that I would yeah. play and it would take us a month to get them from Mitsuro. Yeah, to, yeah, and then I remember when we had the uh, Flex magazines, they came out the results, but then you had to wait for the editing of the yeah. of the Olympia <coughs> magazines. It was different stuff. then, right? Yeah. Now you get things immediately. immediately. But, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but um, you had to wait thirty days, you know, yeah. for that that magazine to come out because normally yes. the magazine was like either thirty to sixty days, you know, late. But um, I um, I know we want to save this for camera, but I, I remember when I first met you because I'd heard about you. And uh, there was a rival that you had uh, uh, when you were an amateur. Um, guy had huge calves. Can't remember his name, but you guys were battling to turn pro. Um, he doesn't. He didn't. Uh, I don't know if he ever Zach turned. Khan? He had massive calves. Also, I don't know. Also. I don't know. But um, I remember we met outside uh, Max Muscle, and I was on my <laughs> motorcycle, and. Um, I forgot how it happened, but you walked oh, out. I can tell you. But I can remember. <laughs> I can remember to the T. I can. You tell your story. 
I, I remember somehow I was getting ready to leave and you came out and you, you know, introduced yourself. And I, I, I think I, you know, I said something like, yeah, you know, I heard of you and you, you apologize about the name. You told me the story about your parents that called you. And I was like, dude, I don't own the name, you yeah, know, you kudos to you. You know, I don't own the name. How could I be mad about that? You know? And I remember you just saying, you know, what a relief. Cause you thought I was going to be hostile. I didn't know yeah. how I was going to take it or anything like that. But no, man, it's like, how can you not respect up and coming athletes? Cause we were once that up and coming athlete, you know what I mean? So you just want to instill like positivity and, 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 and like, man, you can go do it too. Why not? You know? So man, I get fucking tears thinking about it because I had a lot of shit. I had a lot of shit for that name. Um, I just remember coming to the U S and nobody would like, I'm not going to call you flex at all. Wow. Yeah. A lot I didn't of know shit. that. Really? But, um, let me think about that day. Fuck, I got tear come out of my eye. It was a lot, like, for me, that was a very stressful part of my life because I joined bodybuilding, right? I get into bodybuilding. And here I am, unbeknownst to me, again, uh, rugby. Right. This is a free, free gym membership. I, I follow bodybuilding. And the next thing, Flex Wheeler is chasing the title for the Mr. Olympia. And they were like, you can't, we can't call you. No way, there's only one flex. There's only one flex. And I was like, I went to my mother and I said, Mom, they're telling me I can't call myself flex. And she said, Listen, babe, this is who you've been called since six years old. It's your name. Wow. And if you change that, then you're changing on who you are. And everybody knows you of, you know? So I ended up obviously sticking to my guns and I can be a stubborn fucker too, as everybody in this room knows. <laughs> Um, <laughs> one person more than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, and I ended up uh, coming to the U.S. and um, I remember going to Gold's Gym, straight to Gold's Gym, and introducing myself. And then it became very awkward mm. to even want to even say my name. And you know, these guys yeah. were coming up to me in the gym and say, "Hey, where you from? From Wales?" And I was a pair of legs. Right, right, like, right, right. Twenty years old. Right. And I was wearing these short shorts because coming from the rugby fucking days, yeah. I didn't realize that, you know. That wasn't cool yet. It wasn't cool. <laughs> now, <laughs> it yeah, now it is. Now it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in Europe, the short shorts were in fashion. Right, right. You know, they're, they're a little bit, you know, more lengthier than a pair of Speedos. And I was going around and I had a lot of people come up to me and say, like. Are no, you kidding? Fucking, no, we ain't calling you flesh. I never knew that. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you'd know these guys. So. I just kind of wow. grinned and bared it, bared it, you know. And these guys would call me James. Cause that's, and then I ended up being like, you know, James Flex Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I'd introduce myself. And they're like, oh, you know, there's only one Flex. And, you know, there's I no way you can that. call yourself that. And, and then um, I went through the, I did, I went through a very weird transition. But when I met you, it changed the game. Because if it was for that one guy whose name he was Flex, and he didn't give a shit. Mm. And who the fuck was everybody else? Yeah. 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 I um, never knew that, Flex. Wow. Yeah. And, um. I, I, and I'll tell you about that meeting we had. Um, I was in Dave, Dave Bollet's Max Muscle. Yeah. 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 I'd sold it to him because yes. I'd owed it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, I was on the sofa, and I just hear this. <laughs> 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 this crazy... Chopper or whatever it was. You have a was it a char, like a Harley Davidson? Yeah, or yeah, something? yeah, 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 it yeah, was yeah. A, no, it was, it was one of my it was one of my lines of my uh, bikes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was yeah, customized. Yeah. That's right. It was the Flex Wheeler signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was beautiful. I just remember. And I'm looking out the windows, which were covered in posters. Yeah. So I was able to like sneak through the window without being caught. So I was sneak like looking like like this, and I was like, oh fuck, it's Flex Wheeler. <sighs> gonna have this conversation and Dave was like hey Flex is outside you gotta meet him you gotta meet him you know Dave doesn't yeah, even, yeah, yeah, Dave yeah. wasn't even privy to the whole name right, right? right. so then I, I I mustered up the courage to go out and, and, and say what's up to you and I remember um, you were you were on your bike and off your bike and, and you fucking New Yorked <laughs> what year was this oh, gosh it was after it was after I retired you were still big don't yeah yeah it had to be like nineteen, uh, like two thousand, like two thousand, early two thousand, yeah, two thousand, four, yeah. five, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And then I went up to, to Flex and I said pretty much what you said, you know, hey, I want to introduce myself and, you know, there's a reason <coughs> why I got the nickname. I had it since I was six years old and I just want to let you know it's nothing to do with bodybuilding. I'm not trying to, and you just kind of like. I remember just cutting you off and <laughs> just <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you remember this? Yeah, And yeah. you were just like, Flex, it's, it's your name kind of thing, you know, and, and it was just like this whole, this bag got off my back. Because I was, uh, up until that point, uh, uh, my name and who I was and everything of existence, I was living in your shadows in terms of the name, right? Mm. And <coughs> it, it was, you know, I was trying to create my own path. I mm -hmm. wasn't trying to be right, right. anybody else but myself, but it just so happened. You and I had the same nickname, How right? crazy is that? Yeah. And, you know, and yeah. I remember, like, um, it was one of the times you won the Olympia, I think, or no, it was the Honor Classic. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met your parents. Yes. And your mother uh, came up to me and she told me the whole story and everything. You. And I just, I just fell in love with your mother. Um, but it's just like. When Shout she told out, me Angela. To, yeah. When she told me the story, it's like, it's so actually hard to believe, you know, because Flex is such an unusual name. Yeah. You know, even though we had Flex equipment back then, you know, yeah. who I hate them because they tried to sue me. No. They literally sued me over the name. Uh, yeah, shit, yeah, they sued me over the name um, when I had my clothing line. But um, well, they're not in, so screw you guys. Well, they're um, not in business. Anymore. Yeah, not to mention how we built their name by using their equipment and videos. But anyway, um, and then hearing the story and everything, I was like, wow, how crazy is that to have two guys using that name in the same sport? Yeah. But like I said, you know, because I, I. You know, I'm like a moody person. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know if I have like issues or whatever mentally. Well, I know I have issues mentally, but I'm extremely oh, moody. Body bullets. Yeah, it, you know, but mine started before then. But anyway, um, but I just remember just you know meeting you, and I'd heard about you. Um, so for me, it was an honor to finally meet you. But I mean, how could you be that big of a dick? You know, to say that you own a name. I mean, I, there I don't, are some people who would be. Yeah. yeah, but they're they're that big of a dick. No, yeah. you're right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> absolutely, probably not really but that big of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um. You got to remember too, though. I was in my early twenties, mm. and you had been there, done it, and you were, you had achieved everything that we all start off to to emulate. So, you could have damn well been that guy. No, you could, but I'm saying you could have, right? And you could have been like, yeah, bro, listen, that. No. Good luck. You no. know. Good luck in following my shoes, you no. know. Because you weren't. And, and all of us are trying to blaze our past. Like, you know, like I said earlier, um, you know, any athlete, we're just trying to better ourselves. We're trying to take care of our family. So I never got into that. I never got into, um, you know, like personally having a vendetta against another athlete because how? For me, that's yeah. just not the sign of a champion. This man standing next to me on my left and right and – they're just trying to better themselves. They're trying to take care of their family. They're trying to, you know, the better they do in a competition, including beating me, the better their paycheck is. So as a real champion, how could you be upset with anybody who's trying to do what you're trying to do? You know what I mean? And, you know, that, unfortunately, that happens a lot in, in all sports where they get personally, you know, involved with a person. Um, and that person doesn't make the decision. The athletes standing next to me are competed against me or you. They don't make the decision who wins. you really a man. Go holler at the judges. Oh, what you know? I deserve this, that, and other. If you happen. really want to be a man, but you're a real punk to go and bat him off this other guy who's mm -hmm. trying to just do the same thing you are. I don't, I don't consider it a champion. I consider it a real punk, you know, to mm -hmm. do that. If you you're really like want to handle business... Go holler at the judges. Go holler at Big Steve and say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, have I, no I pay good money for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have no problem in, in saying I felt that I won or I felt I'd done better. Why shouldn't I believe in myself? You yeah. know what I mean? But, you know, I respect the judges and I don't have to agree with them. Yeah. You know, a lot of the times I didn't. I didn't agree with them. Uh, most of the time, even sometimes I won, I, you know, and I look at the scores like, wow, I don't. I don't know if I did that well, you know, because on my heart is, oh, no, it, there's a few shows that I, I felt that that I struggled, you know. You know, the, the unfortunate part about me that I hate now, and I was talking to Andrew about it is, you know, I knew I knew if I achieved a certain look, it would be really, really hard to beat. Uh, I always knew that. And a few times I achieved that look, and I look in the mirror, and I'm like, I won. Mm. And I would put on my mirror, I won. Wow. And, um, <clears throat> but... 
the bad part about that flex is I would shut down. I wouldn't try to better myself. Mm. And um, <clears throat> my wife at the time um, would always say, but yeah, but let's see how better you could look. You know, let's see how leaner you can look. Let's see if, you know, we can get your, your glutes back striated like they were before. And I'm like, why? I won already. Oh, mm. No one's going to be able to beat this, yeah. you know. And so I never took it forward. And, you know, that's a discussion I was having with Andrew where it's like, you know, I, I built this body, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you did. I go, but to take it to that next level, we got to do things you haven't done before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to train ways that you haven't done before. We got to pose like you never done before or else you're just going to stay that person that you are now. Yeah. You know, and I like I learned a hard lesson because I would get to a look like and I would just shut down and I wouldn't get no better. I wouldn't diet harder. I would just like I would do whatever necessary to maintain that look instead of like just continue pushing. And the bad part about it, I never got to see what I really, really could look like, you know, and, and it just sucks, you know, because now I regret that. But as you said earlier off camera, you know, God has a plan for everyone. And, you know, no matter what, how much people say that I should have won, I know that I wasn't mature enough to win. Mm. I know that. Is it because you didn't push? No, no, no. Oh. I just wasn't mature enough. It mentally? is not push. Yeah, mentally. Yeah. You know, I, I had such massive issues uh, mentally. You know, I was highly suicidal, you know, throughout that, high, that whole time. You know, first time I tried to take my life, I was just 13 years old. So I had massive issues, you know, being homeless, being molested, being beaten and all that stuff. So I'm, I always understood that, you know, even though I strive to try to win, I always understood that, hey, listen, it's like, it's like your daughter. If she's playing you know, next to a socket, she doesn't know any better. That's true. But you do, your dad. So he knows better. So as bad as I was and as hard as I was to handle, I always understood that, yeah, if I won that title, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I'm pretty mm. confident I wouldn't be here you right now. Wouldn't I wouldn't be here right now. No, I, I, I'm 100% sure because I wasn't mature enough. Wow. You know, I was so full of myself and... You know, this this flex that I created, you know, because I got beat up a lot, even though I was an incredible fighter. I just I wouldn't fight. If you came to the school, I would annihilate you or, you know, I would I would I would I would invite the bully to my martial arts school and I would annihilate him and then I'd let them go back and hey, don't fight him. But I couldn't fight on the street. I just wouldn't hit people back because I'd be like, well, geez, what if I kick him and I break their nose if I hit him too hard and I break their ribs. So I would just like take the ass whooping. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until something clicked over with, you know, with me. Uh, when I got out of high school, I just like I just clicked over as soon as I got to high school and I just like, you know what, I'm just not taking nothing from nobody. But I had these massive issues, so I'm fully aware, and, and, and that's why I'm so confident and, and comfortable with not winning a title, because he loves me enough not to allow me to. So it's like you know, my son, he always like, you know, when <clears throat> I want the charger, you know, and I'm like, son, I can never give you the charger. You know, it's too much. It's too crazy of horsepower. It's, He's like, yeah. you know, how could you say that? I'm like, I'm like, Darius, even the engine builder won't drive the car because he's like, it's violent. You know, it's too violent. It's considered, you know, violent because the way it accelerates and everything. I'm like, so I know better. Yeah. And I can't give that to him. You know, so my point is my my dad knew better yeah. and he couldn't allow me to have that. And I'm completely comfortable with it. You know. Do you think you're? You've been very open and honest Always. in a lot of on a lot of interviews, and I really commend you for that because mental health is is, is massive, man. Now, and it's also for the first time, you know, there's a movement of trying to get, especially in the male world, yeah, mm -hmm. of yeah. us getting us guys to talk yeah. because it's such a yeah. I mean, I myself, yeah, it's difficult for me to, to talk, and I'm just not saying it because, you know, we're on camera, but, you know, like even with us, I can talk to my wife about certain things, but I, and I can't talk about certain subjects. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just that, like, yeah, I don't know what it is. I can't even say it's a tough guy mentality. No, it's like pride to some extent, right? It's but not pride, in a negative sense. embarrassment is us being as men. I remember when I was talking to Terry Crews and – you know, we were on a phone and he opened up about all the things he'd been through. And I'm like, what? Mm. And, and, you know, he's, he's very open about it now. And, and we talked about it. It's like, it's just that men mentality. That's why we hurt so horribly because we don't share yeah. things. We don't talk about it. We, you know, we're, we're worried about the public considering us being punk or weak, yeah. you know, and it's really, truly the opposite. I'm not saying people who can't discuss it are punk or weak or whatever, but it takes a different type of strength 
to put yourself out there for people to be ridiculed. I get people all the time, you know, sending me messages that, you know, a punk or you're a pansy or you're a crybaby. Uh, you know, I get I get messages with people this. like with a noose around my neck. You should be what? hung. You in double A. Yeah, I, I get all kind of crap like that. You know. And even some of my family members get upset because, you know, why do you discuss that? Why do you talk about that? I'm like, for the, the low percentage that give me negative crap to the millions of like, thank you so much, it's yeah. for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. we, I feel that we have an obligation, you know, to be as open as we can because people just see the, the grits and the glory of our lifestyle. They don't see any grit and the glory. They don't know what we went through. So you got so many kids like from you, for, from where you come from and what you've been able to achieve. Your story probably inspires so many people from your hometown. Like, wow, I don't got to be from the United States. Yeah, yeah, I don't got to be this tall, you know, or whatever, you know. So short. I can believe, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I I argue. I say that because I'm like one of the shortest in my family. My father is six three. My brothers are six four, six five, damn near three hundred pounds, just muscle. And I, I argue with him all the time, like, Dad, you screwed me. I don't and know about like that. Like he, he goes, he goes, I don't know about that. You, I gave you something, like, shit, I work for mine, and the rest <laughs> came from a bottle, you know. But the truth is, no, I, I do got some of his genetics, but it's just, it's just as men, you know, women are so open and they talk about things and stuff yeah. like that. Well, we don't, but. I think it just takes a different strength. And again, I think we're just obligated that we should be open. Um, and that gives people who've been through something that we've been through, even if they don't talk about it, maybe they believe now, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's a vulnerability thing. Yeah. That's the strength that you guys are talking about. You know, you can't go to the gym <clears throat> and build vulnerability. Yeah. Right? No, it, it comes from people like you guys talking about it for the other listener to be like, Oh, they can talk about it. So yeah. it gives them that, mm -hmm. that that's where the strength comes yeah. from is people voicing it, being vulnerable. And then they're like, okay, maybe I can talk to someone about it. And knowing it. that I'm not a weirdo right. or a yeah. punk or whatever, yeah. you know, alone. hearing Terry mm -hmm. and other people uh, talk about it, it's like, okay, I'm not alone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a punk. I'm not a pansy, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just validation. Yeah. Well, and in the bodybuilding community, you know, you're building this superhuman physique, right? Mm -hmm. Exterior. Yeah. I think that in a lot of ways it makes some men feel like I need to be superhuman in all ways. Yeah. Right. And, and I think that's tough because, you know, I don't know that everybody would want to say this, but you know, there are hormones involved and things like that, which do affect mental health. Right. And oh, you go through that. some, some issues, you know, yeah. especially in PCT and everything else. Like yeah. that can be a tough time. You know, you can deal with depression, you can deal with, yeah you know, sexual issues, ED, whatever, like that's not something people want to talk about. Right. Until somebody talks about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Until you're, you're right. Until someone talks about it. And, you know, one of the biggest things I try to offer to my guys is the mental aspect of it, because, you know, they're champions already. And like I told Andrew, you're a champion from birth. Now we just got to prove it to the rest of the world. You know, you're a freak of nature from birth. Now we just got to prove it to the rest of the world. But um, it, it takes someone to, to go out and, and, and do that first. And, and that's why I, I just feel that, you know, for some of us who's been able to make a living off the public, we owe them that public service of doing that because, you, you know, you might have saved somebody's life, yeah. you know, and I'm sure, sure we have saved, you know, many people's lives uh, and being open about that. But, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's actually a, a different type of strength. I'm not saying everybody, we all have our gifts. Mm -hmm. We all have our gifts and we have to respect, you know, um, I don't hold it against someone that if I'm strong about something and they're weak about it, I don't stand on them about that. Cause you could stand on me for so many things. You could barely read, man. You could barely write, you know, you're dyslexic. You can't do this. So I'm like, I don't believe in that. You know, it's like, Hey, if I, if I can handle that, let me carry that. And you carry, you can carry. Yeah. But hormonally wise, what you were saying is, um, I try to help people understand, you know, go back and look at pictures of me when I was an amateur, how skinny I was, you know, even before then, you know, when I was called skinny Kenny, that was my other nickname because yeah. <laughs> it was true. I mean, I graduated, literally, I graduated out of high school and I barely was a hundred pounds. I was 98 pounds, you, you know, ripped. I've seen wow. them old photos. Yeah. Yeah. But who, I mean, come on. I'm like my freaking ankles, you know, were freaking as big, <laughs> but anyway, you know, what would happen to us metamorphosally, you know, as far as how we are able to put on extreme amounts of muscle, I, I try to help people understand mentally, you go to 10 times more than that. Yeah. 
Mm. You know, so if you look at pictures from Skinny Kenny to uh, the the one great photo of me, it's like, Jesus Christ, how is that possible? And I'm like, no, no, no. But what it does to you here is 10 times worse. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't really understand that. And and only until you walk away from the sport and you stop utilizing, you know, sports technology drugs for, you know, two or three years and get it all out of your system, then only could you look back and like, good grief, I can't stand myself. I can't even watch the old videos of myself because I'm like, what an arrogant son of a B. Now I see what all my buddies, you know, used yeah. to say to me, um, like, damn, man, you're hard to be around. I'm like, really? He's like, you are hard to deal with, man. Just I'm like, give me an example. I've, we've all heard a flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all heard a flex <laughs> wheeler story. Um, and obviously, I, I again, I, I, am, I feel like I have a, a very good relationship with you. Yeah, I 100%. Really truly I truly and and, um, consider you a friend. Yeah, I, and I'm very blessed to, to say that. But, um, it's very hard for me to be like, there's no way. Oh, wow. There's no way. I, I can't even see. the Because wow. you're so humble now, right? You're so humble and you're just a, a great guy. I mean, you're you're around this gym. Opinions vary. I appreciate Every, your opinion. Yeah, but yeah. everybody says the same thing. Everybody <coughs> who meets everyone. You, you, well, <laughs> for anybody, say you have a, f- a fan just walked in here, right? You walked in here, you came straight into the podcast room. That guy was just blown away. He was just like, oh, my God. Oh my God, I love this guy. And you came over and said, Oh, what's your name? Nice to meet you. And blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, a lot of people don't do that, you know. Mm. He, but back in the in the 90s, I know that you were probably mixing around and had friends with the uh, NFL guys, mm. yeah. uh, the NBA guys. Yeah. You were all at the top <laughs> of the tree. And you yeah, guys yeah, they all trained at Ghost Gym. Yeah, so that was do, great. Do you think that that sort of. Um, the way they handle themselves rubbed off in the bodybuilders of that era? Or or you tell me different? No, you know, for me, um, like I said, you know, because of my background and and what I had to deal with as a kid, you know, um, I learned at an early age that, you know, certain people, majority of people will take your weaknesses and use it against you. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, you know, being homeless and, and, and on welfare and uh, and having to wear hand-me-downs and, you know, being molested, you know, from the age of five until I was like like, like 15 or 16, um, I just learned. So not knowing it, I built this character, this alter ego, Flex guy, not understanding what I really done. But, you know, Flex was a guy who didn't take shit from nobody. You know, however you want to happen. I'm like, you know, I used to say I'm like the weather. You know, however you want to be, you know, you know, you walk outside, it's hot. You know, you put a tank top on. If it's cold, you put a jacket. So I'll be with you however you need me to be. If you need me to be a dick, got it. No problem. Let's make it happen. You want to be cool. So not knowing it, I I built that alter ego guy um, because of how I was abused as a kid, you know, just being beat up and everything. And I really didn't understand it. And um, it was so bad that people would tell me, like, my, my aura would arrive like an hour before I even got to the gym. And I wasn't like mouthy or, or like cocky. Well, I, I guess cocky and arrogant. Yeah, but it was a facade uh, because I was trying to hide Kenny Wheeler, who was none of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I didn't want people to take advantage of me. And, um, but I wasn't a bully. I didn't. I didn't bully people. You know, like like when you met me, I, that was that was really me. I, I was just like whatever people needed me to be. If you. You know, sometimes, you know, I'm sure it happened to you. You're so driven about your sport. You know, this is our job in here. Mm. That's like walking into a surgery room and trying to talk to the guy. Get out of here, man. I'm working. I'm working here. Mm. I'm not here to socialize or hang out and have fun. You know what I mean? So people would sometimes walk up to him like, damn, man, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're pretty hard or you're pretty an asshole. I'm like, how come you just sit and say hi and see how I really am now? I'll be that guy for you. Fuck yeah. off, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, or if they were nice, you know, hey, how you doing? Hey, how, the same. You know what I mean? Now I'm just more comfortable with just being me. If you want to be a dick, go ahead, be yourself, whatever. I'm still going to be me. But then I was so uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. I just applied myself to however you wanted me to be. If you greeted me nicely, then that's what you got back. If you gave me an eye, I'll give you more of what you, I'll give you ten full of what you gave me. Yeah. You know, I would just escalate it. So was it just a maturity thing? Like, was it an age maturity thing? What do you think? Um, no, it was it was an insecurity thing. You know, okay. I have I have, you know, I'm, I'm brutally honest. I have like little to no self-esteem whatsoever. You know, I, I, it's hard for me to take compliments. I, I'd rather walk away mm-hmm. and then to acknowledge a, a compliment, which they're going to view as you're arrogant. 
you're cocky. Mm. You know, like when I was on stage and I walk out and I'll be like, yeah, let's go. What I was really saying to myself, like, oh my God, they're going to find out I'm a phony. You know, if I got called out in the first round, I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I, I didn't want to show that. If I show that, then people are going to be like, they're going to believe in it. It's like if you walk into a room and a room smells great, you sit down and you relax. If it stinks, you're going to be like, you, you never go. It can be spotless, but it smells. Yeah. You're going to constantly be looking around. What the hell is still? Yeah. Mm. So if I walked out on stage and I'm like, people are going to read into that. Mm-hmm. You know, but if I walked out arrogant and cocky, but yeah, 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 let's go. So that was just, I would just try to put on a facade, and that's where it really was from, just having no self-esteem. Um, was there anybody during that era in your circle that knew? Rico. Okay. Rico, yeah. You know, I was always considered a leader because I I I'd done more. I was more flamboyant and open uh, than Chris and Rico was, but... Rico was always a leader. He was always a more mature. I always knew that he was a leader uh, out of the three of us, uh, even though, you know, most of the weight was put on me. I always knew it was him. He was way more mature. Me and Chris would have easily tore each other apart. We've almost got into massive fights before. Um, you know, he threw like a hundred pound, a hundred pound dumbbell at me one time. How the hell did somebody throw a hundred pound dumbbell? <laughs> we're just, they were, we're just lit, but we were, we're yeah. similar and not backing down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Rico would just stand between us and be like, you know, whoever's wrong, you're wrong, you're right. You need to cut this BS out. And he'd yeah. turn around and walk away. But not, so I feel like a punk now. It's like, yeah. wow, you know, bro, yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. Um, but no, it was, it was always him. He, he truly, um, knew who I was. I tell you somebody else which is really odd. Tom Prince. Yeah, Tom. Uh, you know, rest his heart, rest in peace. Like but um, he read me like a book to the point where I, I didn't even want to be around him. It's like three people in my life that just read me. I couldn't put on a facade big enough. Yeah. And Tom just like one day is like, I know you are flex. And I'm like, yeah. And he starts saying things. And I just looked at him like, yeah, this conversation's over. Then I had to be more of a dick to try to throw him off. I'm trying to send him all kind of signals, but he goes, you can say all that you want, man. I know who you are. You know, you, you don't have to be that way. And, um, it was another person. I didn't even know I was in the airport and they walked up, they were a fan and we we're talking and they just started telling me about myself. And I just looked at him. I just immediately walked away. It's kind of weird though, to be honest. It is, but even know. more so to read me and not yeah. see my, my BS. I mean, it truly read me. So, but Rico was one, but I was brutally honest with him. Um, you know, he's, he's one of the closest uh, friends that I ever have. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I looked up to him even then so much because of the maturity. I mean, here's an example, like one story. I know you want to hear stories. So, I love stories. So I was so immature and had such low self-esteem, I couldn't leave the house without having at least 10000 in my pocket. What? And, you know, I always bought these exotic, crazy cars. And I had this house in Venice that was seven stories. Um, and me and Rico were driving in my, uh, I just had bought a Mercedes 500 SL when they first came out, right? We're driving down Beverly Hills and, um, you know, top down and everything, blasting music, being annoying. <laughs> and it's just annoying as hell. The concrete's vibrating from my music. And um, I look over at him. Um, also, Robin Chain. Knows Shut me. Oh yeah. yeah, Robin Chain knows me like a book. Uh, we all love Robin. If, he, if he ever wanted to write a book about me, he would. Geez, he would ruin me because he knows everything. <laughs> he but uh, no. I know, no. I know, no, I know. No. Um, but I looked at Rico and I said, "Wow, money don't make you happy, huh?" You say what? It, money don't make money. you happy. And he looked at me, goes, "Wow, Flex, you finally learning." And the same thing to Robin. I remember sitting in the jacuzzi at my house and we were talking. And, uh, you know, he knows everything about me. And I was like, wow, Robin, I'm like, you know, I'm just so unhappy. You know, just money don't make you happy. Women don't make you happy. You know, you, you try to obtain these things that think's going to make you happy, whether it's a car or a girl yeah. or a business or money. Nope. It's just a big black hole, and you keep dumping into it, and you'll never – if you don't have true inside happiness, it's like um, the rapper T.I. said, you know, you might be rich, but you piss poor morally. Mm. Mm. And I was just piss poor morally. So it didn't matter my titles or my car or whatever assets I have. I was still, you know, try to bang myself out and take my life, you know, because I was so unhappy. So that's where it came from me. Just low self-esteem and uh, and just not want to be abused, you know, by people. Going back to what you were saying there about the happiness, um, was there any point when you were competing in your career where you were just – the happiest 
I know we've spoken off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like now in your life, you've yeah. got you've found a new version of yourself. Yeah, you, you've learned to love yourself for the learning you know, the pros and yeah pros and cons or whatever. You've lived a life also, so like you said, there's there's materialistic stuff that you, you were able to chase. You you got it. Was the competing side fun, or was 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 that what what element during your peak of career brought you the most happiness? Wow, I don't know, because it was only for a few hours. If I, you know, I was I was so effed up that I wouldn't allow myself to be happy. I'd literally tell myself, "Why? It's only going to come where you're going to be unhappy soon. So just." Just stay like this, or stay just a little below. I, I, you know, I don't want to be like this because something you win, are you happy? You know, and next time when you lose, now you're unhappy. Yeah. So I, I just got tired of the you know emotional roller coaster. I would just try to tell myself, stay even till you know somebody say great about you. There's plenty of people who say something negative, so don't get too high over that. Um, but I, I remember telling myself, you have a few hours to be happy, and then who gives a f? Because if you say like, you know, like if I win the Arnold, I'd be happy and you see pit, pit, uh, pictures of me or videos of me eating all these pizzas and I'm so happy. And I tell myself, you got till tonight, but who gives a fuck? You know, next weekend you got to compete and they ain't afraid of you. So you're going to be all happy and high and partying about this. And next weekend you get your ASS handed to you. So what does that really mean? You know what I mean? So I was just wired like that where I just wouldn't try to get too high because, man, it's a, a miserable fall, you know. And um, now I would tell myself when you're done, then you can be happy and look back and reminisce and all that. But right now, now it's the time, you know, it, it ain't the time. You know, I would, again, I would give myself, you know, till that night, Saturday night and Sunday, but come Monday, F off. Who cares? No one's going to be scared of you. You know, nobody's going to run from you. I have a question. So you you said that the the name or the person Flex was an alter ego. Yeah. You obviously still have and use the name today. Yeah. So have you? It, well, two questions. Have has that name changed? The meaning of that name changed for you mm -hmm. from the second you adopted it mm -hmm. to today? And if the answer was yes, at what point in your life did you say, well, I want to allow myself to be happy, right? Or I want to, you know, not have this alter ego, hide things or whatever it meant yeah. for you, you know? Um, I, I still identify and it's difficult, you know, to identify with flex. I still identify it to that name because, um, I've been more of flex than I have Kenny, mm. you know, um, you know, I stopped being Kenny in my teens, like around 19 years old and started being flex. So I literally been that guy more. And I, I honestly don't, want to remember too much of Kenny because it's not all good. You know what I mean? Um, I'm still in that transitional phase of just trying to be happy and accept, you know, it's like, I forgot the artist. Um, she starts off by saying, you know, accept what you can't change and change what you can't accept, which is massive. Accept what you can't change mm. and change what you can not accept about yourself. And I'm going through yeah. that. And it's an everyday process yeah. because the more I change, the more I realize how much more I need to change. Mm. So I, I'm going through that now. And probably I started that process uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago. You know, I was going to ask that. Like yeah, what, about 10 years ago. What, switch, what triggered flipped, it? Yeah. Actually, probably more like 20 years ago. It's when I, when I got sick with my kidney disease and, mm -hmm. you know, they told me how bad it was and, you know, like, a lot in perspective. Maybe. Yeah, it did. It did. And, uh, you know, I started studying the Bible again and Rico is a massive part of that. And I started going back to church and, and, you know, as a kid, you know, regardless of what, what you believe in as a kid, you're too young. I yeah. agree. You know, yeah. and you get baptized, you know, I come from Baptist and Christianity. You get Same. baptized at this young age and you have no idea what you're in for, man. Yeah. You know, you, you know, I, I come from before churches where the pastor didn't talk about negative things that they've been through. And then, so as an adult and going to the church that Rico was going through, the pastor would talk about his struggles, you know, sexual and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow. I can identify to that guy, yeah, you know, he's not squeaky clean. He's yeah, not who, like, I can, I can, can't, I can't, I don't want to like be that. around somebody like that. Oh. We got nothing to talk about, oh, man. You know, live, um, live, live the life. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, you know, sorry. No, no, no. And um, so 
right around then, and when I start restudying the Bible and kind of realizing, like, everyone in the Bible had major issues, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm looking at them, and I'm thinking about their faith and how strong they are, you know, and, and like, um, you know, I'm like, they might as well be like a thousand foot tall and, and 10,000 pounds to be mm -hmm. that strong of a man. But I, I start realizing, wow, wow they're, they're just like me. They struggle. So now I can identify, and I don't have to hold myself to where I got to be, like, pristine and squeaky clean. I'm never going to be that person. So that's when I started really challenging myself about 20 years ago before, uh, before I had my kidney transplant. And then meeting uh, the young lady who, uh, you know, passed away two years ago to um, cancer. And I felt I owed it to her because I'm still alive and I have this opportunity uh, because of her. And uh, I remember her asking me, you know, Flex, if I do this, will you go back and compete? And I'm like, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. She goes, well, I'm just trying to give you, you know, a few more years to be with your kids because I didn't have that opportunity. My father died when I was a kid. And she used to babysit my, my kids during Bible study. And she goes, you know, I just thought, wow, if I can just give them a little more time. So, yeah, I feel I, I owe it to her. But now that we have the Internet and everything and, man, I get so many messages from people like, you know, mental, you know, disease is so gripping and so powerful. Um, it's just amazing how many people out there are struggling, struggling, you know, with, with suicidal. And, and even now, you know, it's been proven that, you know, statistics that, um, you know, suicide with teenagers is so massive now because of Instagram and Facebook, yeah. you know, yeah, people absolutely. misleading. So, you know, I think, you know, some of us need to be a pillar of strength to just being honest. And you, you alleviate that child from feeling that they got to be perfect, you know, because I'm so far from being perfect, you know, um, I can't even imagine, honestly, being a kid now. Right? Like, we came up Couldn't. in a different time. Yeah. And, like, I have a love-hate relationship with social media. Yeah. You know, I, I hate I, it. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. it for what it can do for business or right. for other things, right? But, like, on the whole, it's fucking stupid yeah. and empty. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, it's a big flex. It is. It's, it's a fake it's, flex. Yeah, it's a lot of people, yeah. Yeah. Do with you know, yeah. just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the fake flex. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, you know, uh, it's people's insecurities they take them they go on social media and go you know please like this you know please i'll do like whatever me. it takes yeah. you know it, i'll show you my asshole if you'll just like the picture yeah so, unfortunately that's the reality dna yeah for guys and girls you know and 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 even myself you know as i was texting you earlier um even myself i get caught up into it because I get messages of people thinking my page is phony because I only have 800,000 followers. And I'm like, oh, I know you're not the real flex. Why are you using his name? Oh, so hot. And I'm like, you know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, what are you at? Like 1.4 or something? That's easy for Two. you to say. Don't worry. Don't but, worry. But, um, but it's, accept, it's acceptance. And we view it as a, a part of acceptance. And, and as I was being honest with flex when I was texting him earlier, I, like I feel horrible that I only have 800,000, you know, or – look at Ronnie or Dexter himself or anyone from that age of competing, they're in the millions. And I'm like, wow, I'm not accepting. I gotta, I gotta remind myself, no, you're, you're not, you know, the value of your followers or the value of your bank account or your house doesn't, you know, identify it to who I am as a person. It's I not am who I am. Right. Yeah. It's not your self worth. You know, it's like that, that old saying, you know, um, we used to say it's a pimp in my right. And I like, no, I don't need to pimp my right out, you know, because, you know, I am the pimp that done that. Or like Jay-Z says, you know, I'm not a businessman. I am the businessman, you yeah. know. So, you know, you created that, you know. But again, you know, me being insecure, you know, that's that's what I came up with. That's why I had nice cars or jewelry, because honestly, I wanted you to look at my possessions and yeah. respect that. And maybe you can respect me because I have them. Where now it's like, no. Respect me regardless. Yeah, it's opposite, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But I, um, on the Instagram side of things, you know, you came from an era where it was print. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I remember you and I also having a conversation a number of years ago where you were like, you were, I remember exactly where we were at, Body Power. We were both, we were opposite each other on booths. 
And I said, Flex, you're on Instagram? I said, ah, fuck that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I don't know about all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll get on it. Yeah. But I think that initially when Instagram was popping, they, it was very similar algorithm-wise to TikTok. Yeah. So, like, if you know this, TikTok blows up. Like, yeah. I've just gone on TikTok, and, and uh, if you're not following, shameful, get following me. Um, <laughs> follow Flax, too. Also, follow Doug. He loves followers. I love him more. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I love you more. <laughs> yeah. You can request love, all you I want. It. I'll he never accept it. anybody. That's what he, he hits it. But, yeah. but in terms of like the transitional thing from um, print to to social media, even for me, I, I I feel like I was very blessed to have one foot right in in one one foot in the, yeah. the other. I was there at the tail end of uh, Joe Weider, R.I.P. Yeah, and yeah. also Peter McGough. Yeah, Sean Perrine, yeah. R.I.P. All these 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 incredible yeah. people have passed now, but. I was there on the tail end of, of that. Um, well, not before. It was the coming of an end, but not the tail end, shall I say. And then social media was popping. Yeah. And if it wasn't for, you know, uh, I would say, if it wasn't for girls, I probably wouldn't have gone on MySpace, right? Yeah. And then, you know, that was kind of like the, you know... I miss the the MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So, Me too, so man. You could put your own music. Yeah, yeah. You got to customize true. your page. Sometimes yeah. I go back to my MySpace. It's, it's still, still up. It's still there. It's like, wow, man, I wish Take I knew the past. I've, taken, I've gone and found Throwback Thursday pictures off that's my old. Wow. That's a good yeah. idea, actually. Wow. But you're um, right. You And I, I'm aware of that. You, you, you were able to survive during... The digital age, yeah, and and I get that all the time. Uh, you know, flex. If you had, had competed long enough, you know, with a digital age, you mm. you would be there easily. Um, but not only that, just not interrupt you. But you didn't jump on the Instagram when it was really early. No. So when all the algorithm was working, yeah, and everybody was just if you post instantaneously, whatever you are here around the other side of the world, that's yeah. when it gets seen. Yeah, um, things have changed. Things yeah. for the better too. But um, with you jumping on. Um, there's been this change with algorithm TikTok. If you're not on TikTok, I would suggest get on. I it. just got on it. Yeah, there I just so many of them. I like know. like you were saying, um, uh, I hated even getting on Facebook. Um, you know, because I I loved MySpace. You know, what it just says MySpace, yeah. but you know, but I ended up getting on on on, on Facebook because MySpace kind of died out. It did, yeah. and then I, I just I just I didn't understand it, and you know as open as I am, I don't want to be open that way. And then I remember when Instagram came on, I'm like, what, what are all these? And then it was just all these different like platforms. I'm like, what does it Which mean? Do like, yeah, yeah, I like it. And I thought it was a kid game. And, you know, from talking to you Same. and then some other people, it's like, no man, it's just like business. And then I went and looked and like the top fortune 500 people are on that, you know, and they use it. I'm like, yeah. good grief, man. So, you know, but it's so many different um, platforms. I just, you're almost like, you know, you're in business too. We have to. Yeah. Mm. And I hate it. You know, I can't stand it. If I want to be open, I want to be open. But I, I have to post. I have to put this stuff up. And, and like you're saying, it's so irritating. Um, you know, it's so irritating. But you got to move at the speed of business. You know, as simple as that. Um, one thing, and I, I don't want to just touch on this. Um, but you mentioned earlier that um, you went through school and you struggled through school. Yeah. As did I. Really? Yeah. Really? Um, so it was, I was kind of that kid who I only really went to school because of sports. Mm. And I'd read stuff about yourself. And, mm. I, and I don't know if you know this, but when I my first week in college, um, I was di diagnosed with uh, di dyslexia too. ADHD. Really? Wow. So, I didn't know that. you know, living, uh, <laughs> us living together that drives her nuts. But she knows, and I'm not using it as an excuse, but my, my attention span. Like, probably now I'm telling you this. I'll talk, and I'll be looking at something over there, and I'm processing something else. Yeah, and I have a every billion best, things going on. Yeah, every best intention to text somebody back, and I forget. And it's like, for somebody who doesn't understand dyslexia um, uh, and, like, ADHD, it's, um, it's, it's terrible. It really is. Yeah. I've had to do things in the daily to, to really remind myself on the simplest of things, you know, 
um, even call my mum, right? If mm. one for her, she's like, you need to call your mum. I was like, oh, shit. And, right. I, and I get so pissed off and so upset. It's and not next thing you know, time didn't pass. And if you didn't gone. do it a day or two, it's yeah. gone. Like, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I'm not doing it. Even with yeah. business, I've got to do certain things as a reminder, you know, just to stay on track of things. You know, obviously, Doug is one of my best friends, so he kind of knows how I am, and he won't take offense to certain things, I'm sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in terms None. of, yeah, with the dyslexia side of things, how much of a, of, let me think how I can phrase this. Just how much did direct. that pay? How, how much did that play a part in your life? In, in still now. To this um, day? Yeah, still now. Um, so, you know, we didn't know. I don't think they understood what dyslexia was when I was in primary school, like, oh you know, in fifth and sixth uh, grade. And, you know, we were the kids that, that had to sit in a corner with a big polka hat that said mm. dummy on it, you know. <laughs> Um, and it was uh, it was so horrifying because I, I come from an era where, you know, there would be like maybe 30 fights a day in school. You know, fighting was just massively uh, huge for racial reasons, whatever. Um, and back then, you know, where there was a blackboard or, or a green board, you know, the teacher would have you come up and spell something. You got to write it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, first I, I write like a uh, like a two year old, you know, um, but then, like, a, you know, I, I, I literally have a difficult, uh, an immense difficult time reading and spelling, you know. Um, so after getting embarrassed and having a fight so many times for not being able to spell or write like a, a freaking, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a toddler, I would just, it's so sad. But honestly, I would, you know, the teacher would say, you know, can you come up and write marijuana? I would just say, fuck you. And so back then we got paddlings, excuse me for, for cussing. Um, but um, we do plenty of it on yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't but, fucking um, worry about <laughs> fucking swearing. For but, fuck's sake. Um, um, I would say the most vulgar thing um, just to get out of it. So immediately yeah. you're kicked out, get, get out. out. You go to the office back then. We got paddling. So I get a paddling. I got to sit paddling. in it. I'm not going to lie. I got paddled. You want too. paddle? Oh, yeah. They got rid of it. When no, I, was I got yeah. paddled. Yeah. I, thought I it think it's massive. I think it's just. You know, we'll we'll jump on that one next. You know, but um, I get a paddle and then I got to sit in his office, the principal's office, until that class yeah. is over with. But I'm like, I accepted that mm. instead of you know having to be a, a, a vulgar mouth little kid who wasn't me. I'd rather get that than to have to get embarrassed. And um, even now, I mean, I've, I've missed out on so many movies, so many commercials because I'm like, I'm not going to go and expose myself to letting them know that I can't read well, yeah. you know, and um, now I know there's tons of classes, there's, there's government, you know, uh, classes where they'll pay for it, you know, with dyslexia, and and even now, I'm so riddled with us, like, I'm not going to go there and, and, like, be in a class with dyslexic people and have everybody look at, like, wow, flex, and people would tell me, like, yeah, but they're there, too, I'm like, yeah, yeah but they're not flex, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, but you're open about it, I'm like, yeah, but still, you know, um, yeah, just yeah. showing up. So it still bothers me now. I mean, you know, I'm horrible. I get made fun of when I'm making posts. I misspell something, oh, you yeah. know, like that. And then everybody makes yeah, fun of me. But yeah. I'm like, I gotta. <laughs> they do it to him too. Yeah. Really? Really? I'm bad. Wow. But I'll just go in and edit it. I, 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 <laughs> what I do is I <laughs> show my phone. It, it messes up the algorithm. You know, yeah. I found out whenever you go and edit Shit. something, it, 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 it yeah. takes you out. I'm like, oh, God, I gotta leave it up there. <laughs> I, I am terrible with my spelling. I've, I've got in trouble so many times. Really? I, I went to one gas pausing. <laughs> one year, and um, it's one of them scenarios where you hit the post and you not, you don't have a signal, right? I was mm. whatever, and uh, it was uh, let me think. I was guest posing in Wisconsin, I think, and I and what I meant to say was, can't wait to meet all the athletes tonight. Um, Going to be a great event, but what I wrote was. Can't wait to may- meet all the atheists tonight. Yeah. I actually it's remember be that post. Wow. Because one, I think it was maybe you that said, hey, you better want to change I, this. I'm terrible with writing. Really? Like, like, I write him stuff, and he goes, bro, I love reading your stuff out. <laughs> but I, and then, but I know, I'll say, Normally, I double check things if I write something out, and I'll look back and say, oh, jeez. I can, can even you tell. Your errors? Can you find your errors? But what, I'm, what I'm writing, this is, this is the thing. What I'm in my head what I'm trying to say and what, I, what actually translates through my thumbs. Yeah. I miss words. I misspell things. D's and B's sometimes. Or, um, 
I'm there. I already know. And yeah. I know this is the crazy thing. I know it's not right. So then, thank God for spell check and stuff. I'll highlight it and, and I'll change it. You gotta it. have an idea. Sometimes yeah. I don't even have an idea how the word is spelled, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like saying it over and over, and yeah. like, God dang you, series, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you're saying something because you know, and it's helping me to pronunciate words better. Yeah. You know, because I'll see how series grabs, and I'm like, wow. So that's something I need to do better is pronunciate words better. But um, thank God for series or else I'd be horrible. But um, even Siri worse. Siri doesn't like his accent. I, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. But they supposed it's supposed yeah. to learn, which, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen I've <laughs> seen plenty of never, text. I never knew that about you, man. I never knew that about you. It's, it's, it's uh, a dry flex. Yeah. But I literally still now, I, I, I um, you know, I, I turn down roles in movies and commercials because I'm just so embarrassed and um, you know Mickey Rourke who's a great friend of mine um, I didn't know that he was horribly dyslexic and I'm like how in the hell does he do and he's by 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 memory I have a coach and it's by memory and I've been doing it so long and I I read by memory if it's a word that I not that familiar with I'm lost so when I'm reading I'm reading by memory and and my dyslexia is so bad that I I used to put my kids on shoes on backwards and 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 um, and that's why I was saying, can you catch your errors? So I can't catch my errors and someone point them out until they mm. point it out to me. And almost literally, it's like the words remove in front of me and change right there in front of my face. And only then could I see my errors. So you know, a lot of people are like, well, text yourself first and then read it back. I can't see it. Yeah. You know, read mm. it backwards and catch it. Yeah. Only until I post it out there and someone says something, I'll look at them like, good grief. Yeah, it's so yeah. funny when you were talking about school because. I got one of my good friends, um, you know, one of them friends that has been there all your life yeah. and is overly proud of you. And I'm like, I'm still, and, and he still say, I'm still the same guy. Yeah. Like when I go back home, I'm talking to Mark Tom, shout out mm-hmm. Mark Tom. Uh, one of my best friends as a child. Um, and he, he and I went through school and we were kind of like the mischievous kids, you know? They, they separated us every time. Then they were like, well, fuck, this is not working. We'll put them back together. But he will tell me stuff of how I was treated in school. Um, maths was never a strong point for me. I was called <laughs> stupid. Uh, these, they they can get away with it back then. I was called stupid, oh, yeah. dumbass. You know, you're never going to mount in much. <laughs> you're only going to go into the army. And this is no disrespect to a lot of my yeah, military yeah, yeah. boys. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, there was... It was in an easy town, way out back it was, then. It was the, for me, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, and then when I started up my business and I won Young Business Year three times, good grief! I went back to that class, and guess what? I always knew you could do it. Get out! I had to make. I was going in there pissed. I was going to school her like she used to school me in front mm-hmm. of everybody. And then I just remember being like, "Yeah, you always told me this." And I was like, "You fucking didn't." But if it wasn't for my PE teachers back in school and um, Mr. Owens and Mr. Jones, they knew they knew that um, they give me a safe haven. I would bunk certain lessons. They knew I was bunking lessons. Mm-hmm. I would not even turn up for, for these lessons. And I would go to the gymnastics hall uh, or the gym and I would train. And uh, they would sometimes train with me. Mm-hmm. But they knew. And if it wasn't for these two guys in particular, um, I don't know what I would have done, to be honest. Because when I went to college, college changed my life. It, I had a great time in college. Really? I, had, I really enjoy college. You went to college? I did, yeah. Wow. You did yeah. okay? I <laughs> killed it. Really? How? Be- be- because I got treated like a fucking human. Mm. I wasn't Well, that's when they found down. out. They put, found out the first week in school. They found out first week in college. They found out I was dyslexic. And they also call you by your first name. You know, mm. if you treat a lecturer with disrespect, then uh, get, leave. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be here. Everybody else in this room, you know, yeah. is, is participating. Right. And then I found, like, wow, you know, if you give respect, you get respect. It begets. And I give respect in school when I was in, in you know, the equivalent of high school. But I, I turned up. I tried my best, and it was never good enough. Yeah, it was like just suck. Yeah, you fucking suck. Yeah, try harder. I don't understand. You're a dumbass. You know why is everybody else understanding and you can't? And then I just you know find myself looking out the window. Or rugby, there was a, a rugby field when I went to school, and I'd look out the window. I was like, oh, I want to be out there. And then you get caught, mm. daydreaming. It's like just leave. 
It was different then. I think. It was different. It was brutal. It was different. Yeah, yeah. It I think was. T- there was. were a lot of teachers. I, mean, I hated high school. Yeah, I hated it. More, and I, I did really well, but I still hated it because they were disrespectful on purpose. Yeah, and you I'm not, away with it. I yeah. never, I never took disrespect from anybody. Yeah. Yeah. No way. So, <laughs> anyone who knows me, so I talked shit to everybody. Mm. I fought a lot. Yep. How did I? I almost yeah. fought a teacher. Yeah. Because I just didn't give a shit. Back then, a teacher would fight you, too. They yeah. would. Yeah. And we were talking about the paddling thing I wanted to jump back to. You know, I, I think, you know, I was a police officer for a while, and I was just with my, my cousin who uh, did 29 years. Uh, he's my older cousin, my favorite cousin in the world. Um, and it's a shame because as an officer, nowadays, you could beat the hell out of a kid. You can kill him. But as a parent, you can't discipline your kids. Oh, you're yeah. right. And, and I come from an era of being disciplined. You know, I know the difference between being beaten because sure. someone is not happy uh, or being spanked because you deserve it. Mm-hmm. But um, I think there, you know, even God says you need to have a healthy amount of fear of me. And I think, you know, nowadays kids don't have any fear because they can't be disciplined at home. But you know, there has to be something at the end of the day that that child does not want to happen. And if it's a spanking, then let it be. Yeah. If it's discipline, like you're on timeout, if that's good enough, then let it be. But there has to be something that they don't want or else they keep pushing. We have every inkling of evil in us at birth. Mm -hmm. And as a child, they don't know any better other than to push. Right. Um, Social media just exacerbated that too. Because well, having now access filming. to a phone, right? Yeah. Oh my so gosh, social media, it could just geez. be you can press record, yeah, and then you send it somewhere. So that that has made it very difficult to do what you want in your own home. Yeah, you know. And I mean, to quote Bernie Mac, "Old enough to talk back, old enough to get fucked up." Hey, mm-hmm. you know, I, I come from a, I come from an era that if a, if it wasn't a belt nearby, it was their hand or whatever was close we enough. You know switch. what I mean? My Shit. grandmother, who, you know, yeah. who raised me, an incredible woman. Uh, she uh, her birthday was on the twelfth of August. Uh, mine's the twenty third, but she'd be one hundred and thirteen now. I mean, wow. every anything good of me is because of her. You know, I, I still you know things I just can't do because I'm like I know she sees me. You know, I want to honor her, but um, she she would give me spankings. You go out and you pick a, 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 a you know a, oh, yeah. a limb off the peach tree, yeah. and I knew every time I got a spanking from her, I deserved it. It was no muddling or you know I'm mad and everything like that. But while I'm getting, I knew I deserved it. You know, versus you know um, you know someone else maybe uh, beating me, and I I know it's because they're just not happy or you know they're angry and it's a beating. There's but a kids difference. know the difference. There's a big difference, but yeah. you know. I, I came on a tail end of that, and I remember, you know, Darius, uh, my son Darius, who lives with me, you met, um, incredible kid. Um, he had he had did something, long story, he had did something, he had lied to me. And I said, you know, when we get home, you know, you're going to get a spanking. And his mother like, no, you're not. She was like, again, spanking. I'm like, yeah, he is. So and when we got home, it was a massive argument. He's like, um, you know, I'm just going to call the police. I'm like, call him. <laughs> And I go, and I'm going to beat your ass in front of them. And when I get out of jail, you're going to get another ass whooping. You know, <laughs> it's not I go, and I'm going to let the officer know. And I remember even my, my oldest daughter, you know, she was having problems in school. And I'm, I, I have only two gears. I, I only have just very normal and laid back or just like, you know, 0.0 saying 0 to 100. I only have two gears. Mm-hmm. So I try my best to stay in this gear because the other guy is destructive, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like... Um, pissing turpentine on a breast fire so if yeah. you imagine piss what that's like so turpentine the fire is is crawling up the turpentine and it's going to burn you and, yeah. and every and i'm okay with that as long as i'm pissing on you mm-hmm. i'm so that's very destructive right sure mm-hmm. so i try to do everything i can not to get upset because then i'm going to enjoy being upset i'm going to try to make myself more upset mm-hmm. and i'm going to just bathe in it and just make you the most lousiest person in the world whatever it is i have I think to we do we can all relate to that <laughs> yeah. honestly she's looking at me i'm looking at her no it's true yeah. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> relatable but it's ugly and it's very yeah. destructive so um you know every inkling of good um comes from my grandmother and uh we got spanking so i think now you know and, and me and my my cousin and most of officers agree it's a damn shame you know that you can't discipline your kid at home but an no. officer can kill them over it you know what i mean so. I just remember being a right little pr- she's obviously heard all these stories right little prick when I was a kid but I will tell you this when I I would go to my grandparents house on the weekends and I would never act up yeah. I had this 
Now looking back, of course, it was different as a kid because it's your grandparents' house, right? But I would never act up in my grandparents' house because they treated me a little differently, I guess. You know, when, when you're in your mum and dad, you yeah. push the boundaries. Yeah. Cheeky. We respected elders then. It's, it, yeah. I, yes, God. yes. We did. You did. We were taught I, yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My grandfather it was, you know, he just passed away a couple of months ago. Sorry to hear that. Huh? Um, thank you. But he lived a life. And them are the stories I know of. You know? Yeah. He was yeah, one yeah. hell of a boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I would get told stories by my grandfather. I was like, that's my grandfather. Yeah. There's no way, you know, about him getting into fights and this and that. But when I would come from school and, you know, we talk about fights, uh, that my school was very rough. Mm. Um, it was the year that I they put cameras up for the first time. Wow. They in cameras because every corner would be, a, you know, the the upper year would fight the lower year or yeah. somebody had beef, yeah. whatever. Um, but it was part and parcel. Rugby is a big part yeah, of yeah, my yeah. life. So yeah. just fighting and yeah. that. So it's like you're, you're kind of brain trained. Yeah, right? rugby it's, and, it's a um, and soccer. Uh, not soccer. Yeah. Rugby and uh, and hockey, hockey are the yes. best fights. Yes, because mm-hmm. they'll just let. You, and yes. it's and it's. I think it, it begets respect because you're not going to mouth off because they know yeah. that guy is. Hey, go ahead, get it in, yeah. get it yeah. over with. I love yeah. that. I think rugby. that shuts a lot of people up. You know, it's like an, an old prison mentality. Now people think they can just run their mouth and have diarrhea. Yeah. I call it diarrhea of the jaw. Yeah. yeah, you know, you can just and, and there's no consequences to. Well, I, I have a freedom of of saying what I want. I'm like, yeah, and I have a freedom of responding to you however I want to. Yeah. Just yeah. Happy freedom with Mike slap the shit out of yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You just hop in with Mike Tyson on the yeah. band, you know? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Can you believe See that? What Come on, man, get and, out and, of here. And, and in fairness, Mike was like, no, 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 on that guy. But um, going back to you know early fighting and um, transitioning into the person you became. You know, I, I've heard one or two stories about the the, the, the temperament of Flex Wheeler back in the day. Um, I also heard that from your martial arts background that you could really handle yourself. You were, you were known in the gym as somebody who could fuck you up if you tried. So I want to hear a story. <laughs> and, and don't say it in all humbleness. I don't care if you've told this story before, but... I've heard that you've had a couple of scraps and knocked a few people out. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, you know, I, I, I um, fighting was different back then in martial arts. You know, we didn't wear gear; we fought on cement, um, and it was like respect. If you got like your bell rung or you got your your kit, your 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 ribs broke or something like that, you sick. Great, man. You know, it, it's yeah. what do you want? We're fighting. You know, um, so. Being a, you know, like I said, when I switched over to being not not a dick, but just if you looked at me wrong, I'm gonna look back at you. You know, it's 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 an era where you know I'm looking at you, looking what's up, what's up with you? It's nothing else to say. We meet in the middle and we make it happen, right? Um, but uh, as good as I was a fighter, I, I watched people above me fight, and I wouldn't be able to stand a chance with them. Um, so that helped me start to humble myself. And I was a bouncer at a number of different uh, nightclubs in Fresno. And um, that's when I made my, my transitional stage of not taking it. So if you call me the N-word, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. It's no one can really? save you. Oh, Jews. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just, and it's crazy now because people use the N-word like it's nothing. I'm like, no, not around me. I mean, you know, I won't say anyone's name, but there's just billions of people who just try to use it in a love and respect. I'm like, there's no respect in that word. There's not about white guys. Saying yeah. That. No, no, brothers. I mean, like Dexter, you know, oh, he right, loves okay. using a word, but, you know, he respects yeah. me enough. Like, okay, I won't, I won't use it around okay. you. Um, but um, I remember thinking I was at a nightclub and I was bouncing and, and this guy uh, pissed on the floor. He was drunk in a bathroom. And I just annihilated him uh, in, in a bathroom. And, uh, and I remember thinking to myself, what happens when I meet the guy who's my maker? He's going to really hurt me really bad, and he's going to enjoy it, and he's not going to stop because he's every bit of me but better. And I watched people, you know, in the black belt division, in the upper black belt division fight, and I wouldn't stand a chance with him. I mean, people like Billy Blanks and these great fighters back then, Benny Arkitis, you know, who fought, just went to everyone's country and ran through them. I watched these guys, and I wouldn't have a chance with them, right? I was like, what happened if I meet this person on the street? They're going to, like, hurt me really bad and enjoy it. So I just remember telling myself, okay, as long as they don't touch me or use the N-word, they get a pass. 
you know, because I, I would want that person to allow me to walk away with my manhood intact yeah. because I'm wired that I'll take that ass whooping. Hey, listen, if you push me so far, it's better to take an ass whooping than to be a P-U-S-S-Y and walk really? around. Yeah. So um, that's what really helped me. But it's just just I don't I don't I don't like uh, talking about it, but uh it's one fight. We were we were at a club um, called Tequila Pete's in Fresno, and I was just getting there, and these guys were giving this uh, this really big dude uh, a bad time. He was drunk, and they were just like making fun of him and stuff like that. And I was just sitting in my car enjoying the festivities, you know. <laughs> and um, they all went inside, and the guy was so drunk he turned around and, and like, you know, what are you gonna do about it? And I'm like. I don't got nothing to do with this, man. I was just watching, you yeah. know. Yeah. But he didn't know who was involved because he's so drunk and he's a massive, massive big dude. And I'm like, uh, and I'm a scared person, yeah. right? Um, I'm very scared, meaning I'm going to launch my rockets first and I'm not going to stop launching rockets until you just can't do anything or you're really hurt bad. Uh, because I'm aware as a fighter, a punk can whoop your ass. All they got to do is touch you here, touch you here. Uh, touch you in the uh, the, the, the liver, yeah. you're going down. I don't care how tough you are, right? You're going down, and anyone can throw a lucky haymaker and knock sure. you to f out. So that scares me because you don't have to be talented as a fighter to hurt someone, right? You just got to be scared enough to throw just with all your might, and you touch. I don't care. You touch me here, yeah. right? You touch me on the temple, right? You touch me back here. You're gonna kill me, the medulla, or you touch me in the solar plex. I'm going down, yeah. especially if you hit my my kidney or my liver. I'm going down. So I'm a scared fighter, so I'm going to launch first because I don't want to know what you have to offer. I don't want to know because I might not be able to handle what you have to offer. So I'm going to offer everything I have until you you just can't get up anymore because I don't want you getting up later on and coming and finding me. Um, so this guy's like, you know, he's yelling at me, and I'm like, good grief, and I'm looking at him, and I'm not going to say what race he was, but that, that race is known to be able to handle a lot of punishment. You know, they're just brutes. And I'm looking, you know, his, chase is, his chest is right here in my face. He's like, hit me, hit me. And I'm like, Jesus, okay, so he's too close to kick. I'm like, God, if I hit him with this, he's going to be able to, he's drunk, so he's going to be able to handle more. And I remember throwing a hook, but as I was throwing a hook towards his temple, I changed it into an elbow, and he just hit the ground, and I just like, oh, my God. And I walked in a, uh, in a club, and I came out like an hour later, and the ambulance were picking him still up there. and taking me. Yeah, he was still there. Um, but... You know, like I said, I you know I'm not really big on fighting. You know, um, you know I, I understand now it's a stronger man who could walk away from an easy fight. You know, even though we don't want to. You know, it's the man in us or just a beast, and you know, not just men and women are like that too. But it takes a stronger man, and and now I'm just trying to be the stronger. You know, I started getting into that phase where I just wanted to be the stronger person and be able to walk away from a fight. So I just I always said, as long as they don't touch me or, or call me the N word, they're going to get it passed. So, you so know, you, you have anything in Gold's Gym that happened in Gold's Gym in particular? You know what? I don't. Oh gosh, I, I, I've, one, heard, I've heard a lot of different stories with you one, and Rico. It's, it's, yeah, it's one. We didn't fight, but um. Rico, we were all bouncers at this like super famous club called Roxbury. Right, Roxbury was a like the Hollywood spot back in the days, and um, and we were doing leg press. Me, Rico, and Chris, and these group of guys and this girl walk in, and they're all pretty big, and they walk up to Rico while he's on a leg press, you know, and they're cussing him out like, you know, you called my girl a B, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. And Rico's so super mellow. It's like, man, you know, I didn't call her a B. You know, and he gets up and they are hovering over on, you know, so I'll fight quicker to protect someone than I will myself. I think I agree with yeah, that. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you, if you, if you, one of my boys or, you know, if my girl, you have no chance. Like that yeah. video you see all the time, you know, you, if you come to me, you might get away, but you touch them, you know, you're going to meet your maker. Yeah, it's like that. Mentality. So, um, so Rico's being so mellow and I'm like, I'm getting upset. And they're like, and he said, he said, I didn't call your girl the B word, you know. And finally, I'm so angry, and I'm like, what's the deal? Is this your girl? Yeah. Is this the one you think he... Bitch, now what? What are you going to do about it, right? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Bitch, bitch, bitch. What are you going to do about it, right? Yeah. Oh, well, why are you calling? No, 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 no. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Or else, get out of here, right? Yeah. Um, and, and Rico looked at me, he's like, you know, why? And I'm like, because the point is, 
they're 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 taking your your humbleness and your niceness as a weakness, not knowing you're probably one of the worst per- people to fight. But uh-huh. because you're being so nice and humble, yeah. they're getting amped up more and more and beating on their chest. So I just wanted to end it. And afterwards, I apologized to her and I said, "Hey, listen, you know, I'm sorry, but it's just." Obviously, they're not really in here for that, Your yeah. Honor, or else there's nothing to talk about. Call my girl a bee. Yeah. We don't have nothing to say. When I see you, it's on and cracking, and you need to know that. Just as if I was to call your girl out yeah. of her name, I need to understand that whenever you see me, it's on and popping. There's no words to be expressed. Uh-huh. So I used to you know, have these hard ways of looking at it. Like, listen, if we're still talking, I'm not gay. If you are, that's cool. I'm not gay. So what are you courting me? You want to date me? Why are we still talking? Oh shit! Let's make it happen, or else if you're still talking, I know you don't want it. Yeah, that's true. And that's the truth. That's true. Most of the people they'll pump that's their chest. That's a fact. That's it, the truth. A, you yeah. know they'll try to get in a fight in a public place, knowing that it's broke up. I'll be the one to say, hey, no, no, no. Let's yeah. me and you bounce. Yeah. And mm-hmm. let's go somewhere hold where nobody back. hold me no. back. Yeah. Hold Anyone me back. who says hold me back is a yeah, bitch. Says, yeah. yeah no, anybody says let's hold not me even back. argue in front of nobody. Yeah, fuck. You get in your car, I get in my car, let's go somewhere, let's make it happen, let's bury the hatchet, or else, why sit here and talk about it? You know what I mean? Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, but I changed. When you do that, you're not giving a man an opportunity uh, of, of holding his respect as a man. You're stripping everything away, and a real man is going to have to fight you. He's not going to be able to walk away, even if he knows, you know, you're fighting. I mean, there's I never want to fight Mike Tyson, especially now. But if he put me in a corner, I got to. What choice do I have? That's right. It's either that, uh, be a punk and considered a punk for the rest of my life or take an ass whooping yeah. uh, that only lasts however long. But I still walk away with my manhood intact. I go home, lick my wounds and I'll be able to look in the mirror. You're still a man. You're all Fall right with me. Shield. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you, you know, we mentioned about goals, Jim, right? And I'm sure Flex is being very <laughs> with his with his stories. I'm sure he's he most needs people knew about 15, 20 stories come mm-hmm. to mind. He just told us the most PG story uh, he fucking knows. Most people knew, and I didn't have to really fight because even even at 290 pounds, I could take my foot and stick it straight well, in the air. And I would do it all the time it's with crazy. people. So um, what a party trick. Yeah, yeah, really. What really. a good sexual trick, too. Yeah, but really, that's another yeah. story. What are you looking at? Yeah, I see what you're looking at. Especially back then, we wore hot skins with yes. no underwear on, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, anyway, that's another story. But we, we talk about goals, Jim. To me, that was the era. People yeah. talk about the golden era with Arnold. That, that, could, be, that could be your era It was the beginning, to him. maybe. Yeah. But, but to me, the 90s was my era. And I look at that, and I think, to this day, that was the best bodybuilders you'd ever seen in your life. And, and there's no disrespect to the guys on stage yeah. right now, but to me, whether it's nostalgia, whether it's something else, but I look at them era and everybody was fucking on. Every show, yeah. these guys, you guys pushed each other. And I think there was no social media. No. And I think that had a big part of it. Yeah, it was I just think a so. focus on your craft. You're not trying yeah. to show off to, to this person, that person. You yeah, it wasn't sponsor. even any camera phones no. or phones, period. We no. had pagers back then. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but you were, and I'm sure that's a double edged sword because you lost a lot of footage that you yeah. never get back. But yeah. in terms of the focus and the, dis- the lack of distraction, all you had to do was turn up and focus and not have to film a set and whatever or, yeah. or appease somebody or worry about who was like and what. Um, but that era, mate, did you know it was something special? When I you didn't. Were, Me and yeah. Rico and Chris and a lot of us, we talk about it all the time. And uh, um, we just didn't know what was going on or else I would have slowed down and smelled the road this, you know, a little bit more. But, you know, I know for me, like I said, it was my way out. Um, it was my way out from being hungry. I mean, you know, before I turned pro, I was so poor that Rico and Chris would have to pay for my lunches, you know, after we trained. And uh, they would take their money from from getting tips, and they would sit there and, you know, they're my boys, so they're sitting there arguing in front of me, like, you know, you put in more, you put on my... <laughs> Jesus, man, you know, just, just pay for it or don't. No, Chris, you need to put in more, but I'm like... Um, it was my era out, yeah. you know, I couldn't afford myself. I couldn't afford anything. And how do I not give everything to this craft? That's like giving me a lifestyle that I never imagined, you know, um, my pro debut, I, I won the Ironman and then the Arnold and that's, you know, the Ironman was 10 grand and the Arnold was, I think 80 back then. And, um, 
So that's ninety thousand dollars in one week. That's more than I made in my entire life up until then. That's more than I I I, I remember anyone in my family tree ever making. Yeah. And you know, I just understood then. Like I said, this is a job, and um, you know, it gave me the ability, and still now it gives me the ability to take care of my family and my kids and give them a lifestyle. I never, never, never want them to ever know what it's like being hungry, you know, or, or having to sacrifice or wearing dirty clothes, socks that smell so bad you don't take your shoes off at school, you know, or they got holes in it or your shoes got holes in it. So how could you not dedicate everything to that craft? You know what I mean? So for me, I like Rico and Chris, they had like outlets. They would play like video games and stuff like that. I just couldn't do it, man. If it wasn't eat, sleeping, or training, I wasn't about it. I didn't drink. I didn't do anything else. I took what I took necessary to look the way I did, but I was just like so locked in. I was so boring that they wouldn't even do cardio with me. You know, they would go into the other room and do cardio. Like, man, you're so damn boring. You don't even talk. I'm like, I don't got no breath to talk, man. You know, all I can like is hard enough. Who and talks people to would, cardio? Yeah, people would like laugh at me. Like, I'm damn near asleep on a cardio machine just walking. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why it just took everything I had. I think probably more than mental, like stress I put on myself and everything, but it was so overwhelming, but it was harder being poor and broke. You know, um, I remember, you know, going to sleep and like turning the lights on and off in my bedroom. So the rats would stop running around cause I could hear them, you know? So I, w- I would turn a light on and I would keep my eyes closed long enough for all the bugs and rats to scatter wow. and stuff like that. And I remember saying, you know, not even understanding, that I would ever get out of that. I was like, wow, one day I'd be, I'll be able to look back and laugh at this, yeah. not having any idea, but, um, you know, just, that was just my drive. Uh, and I just didn't believe in anything, in anything else that didn't help me achieve or get better at my craft and forget about it. Why? You know, I just didn't get it, you know? Um, and I didn't want to, yeah. I knew that in that, that, that incredible, boring, dull, uh, unhappy environment, I created diamonds and, you know, you look at diamonds that are created in the most hostile environment in the world. And, Gosh. and I was, yeah, and I would just say that, Hey man, you know, and when I would, when I would be happy is when I would mess up on my diet or my training, because mm-hmm. I dabble in both worlds. I go to the movies and, and see what real people get to do. And then I'm, I'm unhappy about my world. Yeah. So I just chose to just stay immersed in my world and never come out of it. Cause then I could create great things. But if I'm on both sides of the fence, I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to want to live a little bit in that world. I want to live a little bit in this world and it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do well. And I did that a few times and I I've talked about it where I would wear extremely nice workout gear, like, like, like Nike wear or something like that. And after that, I go to the club or go to the strip club right after training. I can't, I can't live in both of those worlds. So I'm like, no, I got to stay immersed in this hell and create these, you know, the best version of me. And, and I knew that's where, where I was able to make things happen. And, and I was happy and comfortable with that. Was it like more of a self-sabotage knowing that you can do oh, it yeah. with, you can do it by doing it this way? You know, like John Jones, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good uh, friend of, of mine. One of the yeah. greatest, yeah. greatest yeah. of all time. Yeah. You know, uh, I've, I've had many, I know, with John Jones. I think he's an incredible athlete. Yeah. One of my favorite fighters of all time. Yeah. The skill yeah. set that guy has fight IQ yeah. is next level but I feel like because he's got it sometimes it's like oh, I'm going to push the boundaries to try it out it's not it's not self sabotage but you, but it is you always yeah. kind of find yourself in yeah, that it is. in it that is. same scenario w- would you relate to that John yeah. Jones the story oh no me and John's are really close um you know we trained him for a while uh, with Stan Stan was yeah. his trainer and I was like the mental aspect of it where I, you know not not revealing any of his secrets, but wow, we, we have some incredible uh, likenesses. Commonality, yeah. That is very, very detrimental. Um, so that's a part that I brought into the table, and we still uh, talk to this day. But um, for me, um, it was immaturity and, uh, and self-sabotage because I just didn't believe in myself. I mean, I literally would tell myself I don't deserve to be number one in the world. Yeah. And I would, listen, if you came to the Ironman or the Arnold Classic, I'm like, you're in my house, you're going to have to take this from me. But every time I went to the Olympia up until 99, I'm like, I'm here to take second. Are you really? Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm here to take second. You know, um, you know, 
I understood the business side of it, but I yeah. just didn't believe in myself either. So, you know, I remember, you know, getting into arguments with Sean and, uh, and uh, Kevin all the time. Like, how could you think like that? I'm like, yeah. Why go after, in my mentality, like, why, why go after something that's unachievable and break myself? You know what I mean? Um, there's such an apples to oranges with you yeah. and Ronnie. And like, I looked at your physique and go, fuck, that's, that's a statue. But they titled and credit his of being the look to go after. So mm -hmm. I had to follow suit. So I end up chasing after him, Size. trying to get him bigger and bigger. Um, but I just said, hey, you know, I just I switch gears and say, OK, I'm not going to take Ronnie on. I'm just going to try to set down second place because I know that's achievable. Um, but uh, okay. it's just a lack of knowledge and, and belief only until 98. I remember uh, we were sitting in a room and I was in a room with some other guys. I don't know who they were, but we we're laying on the floor. And I remember them talking about how hard they trained and how they feel they're going to win and everything. And I remember laying there and, and I don't remember who they were. Um, this was 98 and, yeah. but I, they weren't even top 10 Olympias, you know, they just didn't have the ability ever. And I'm yeah. listening to them and I'm like, wow, their self-belief in themselves. I'm like, good. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. You can't even say that you're going after the title. You won't even like acknowledge it. And here these guys are who don't have a chance in hell and being in the top 10, like talking about, I'm like, and I just remember telling myself, like, you F this Olympia off. I go, man, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fight with everything I have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on a show and, and, and try my best. And that's why in 99, I just gave it everything. I, you know, I put on, you know, 10 pounds of, 10 pounds of muscle, came in better shape. And Ronnie was a little off that time. And um, when he beat me in 98, it was by four points or two points or something like that. And I'm like... I could shave that, you know, so coming in 10 pounds, better shape. I'm like, I got it. And even back then we all got along, you know, so soon, as soon as you, you know, you took off your clothes, we knew who won. We'd walk over and acknowledge a person yeah. and everybody's like, you got it. I'm like, I know I got it. I know 10 <laughs> pounds, two points. I got that. And he won by a perfect score. Mm. That really taught me, ah, so this title's out of my reach for whatever reasons, business or whatever. He just perfect scored me and he's not perfect today. I am. And he perfect scored me. So that actually, it really helped me to understand not, not to go harder. Cause if I would have won, if I would have lost by a half a point or something, I'm going to put my phone on the gas. You feel me? And do everything even harder. But it helped me to understand so much. I'm like, ah, so it's no sense of even going harder. Cause yeah. that's out of my control is not reachable. Yeah. And that's what I meant um, by self-belief. I finally believed in myself and my craft and my value. And that's why it's like, I'm not going to be weighted down by these medallions that says number two, I'm not number two. And just because you think I'm number two, don't mean I'm going to buy into it. I'm number one. I'm not going to be held bound by these things. You guys yeah. think I'm number two, but I'm number one. I believe in myself. I'm number one and F these. And that's why I took them off because how many times have you guys been at a show? I keep looking at your ring. Oh, oh. my God, it's so stunning. God, <laughs> yeah. Lord, it's blinding me. <laughs> but, um, Thank you, Flex. How many, how many <laughs> times have you been at a show and the person takes first place and a person takes second place, second place the person who won is all happy? And they, oh my gosh, we made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've the first there. place is now second. So now all of a sudden, oh, I know. the person who fir was first place, they're unhappy. Mm -hmm. And a person who was unhappy is now happy. Yeah. Why? Because of acceptance? Because of what the judges say? I'm like, no. Yeah. And I finally realized that, but I put in the work and ethics, and I'm like, no. And I went over to Ronnie, and I said, hey, man, I love you, you know. And he's like, I love you, too. And I'm like, by the way, I'm not going to be at your party tonight. Why? Why go there and be humdrum and all upset when my best friend in the world is on top of the world, yeah. and I'm going to be over to the corner all up? Take your ass home to your room and freaking eat your pizza and deal with it, you know what I mean? But uh, for me... I just didn't have self-belief. I just didn't believe in myself. Like I said, if you came to the Arnold or the Arnold Classic, you know, the Ironman or Arnold Classic, I'm like, you know, you got to get out of here, man, or else you're going to have to take it from me. But yeah. Olympia's like, no, I'm just trying to second, to, you know, shut down second place. What, what well, was I have a question. Can okay. I yeah, go ahead. I was just going to, like, go ahead, yeah. If you were, because on that topic, if you were to tell your younger self something mm -hmm. and it would resonate, you know, obviously it would have to resonate, what would it be? I would, I, I've uh, been asked that a lot, and I think about that a lot. First thing I would tell myself is to love yourself. Yeah. That would probably be it, because if you love yourself, 
everything else follows suit. You're not disrespectful to yourself. You're not disrespectful to others. You're not, but not a womanizer because you love yourself. You value yourself more. You don't do certain things because you value and you love yourself more. You know, I, I never, I never really believed that I would make it into my 20s. So I lived like I wasn't going to make it to my 20s. And when I got into my 20s, I'm like, wow, geez, you're not going to make it out of your 30s, you know. So I lived that way. And, and only, honestly, honestly, you know, I, I've been suicidal all this time. And this last bout I had in the hospital, um, you know, they, they, my heart has always been incredibly strong. I couldn't have handled all the surgeries I had without having a really, really strong heart. And this time they come in the room and they wake me up and they're yelling like, you know, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I was asleep. You know, what's, what's, what's going on? And they're like, you know, I forgot what they called it, but they said your heart did something eight times in a row. And I'm like, okay, now what? And it goes, nothing. You know, if it was worse, we wouldn't be talking to you right now. And I just terrified me. I'm like, wow, I can fight. I can do everything I want, but how do I control my heart not doing right by me? And I was so terrified. I couldn't even go to sleep. And, and it dawned on me, you know, all this, all these years, 56, well, I, 13, so take off that. But for over 40 years, 30 some odd years, you've been trying to take your own life. And here it is that you have things now that are trying to take your life. And, and it, I don't, I don't, really understand but it was almost like my spirit was outside talking to me like you've been doing this all you you call you've been calling this upon yourself and trying it you know it's closer than what you think and i'm like wow i'm like what happens when you die i mean there have to be some point when you wake up and realize that you're dead and i'm like I don't want to go to sleep and like wake up and I'm like, I'm not here no more. I was like terrified. I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's like, you know, I don't know what my outcome is, but man, I'm going to live so incredibly hard now. I'm going to be so happy. I'm just going to cherish everything. And, and whenever death comes for me, I'll be ready for it because I'm given everything I have now. And that just, I'm just so happy that that spirit of taking my life is gone. So, yeah, loving myself because the true meaning of love is everything falls in a suit after that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you're loved by so many people, my friend. You know, that's incredible, you know, because... It, it's incredible. And I would ask myself, you know, why, why can I change other people's lives for the better, but I can't change my own. And, um, you know, it's, it's sad when you're really suicidal, not just the words, you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've tried, you know, I've taken my life in various different ways. But, you know, people would always say that I was honest with, they would ask me, like, how, you know, don't you think about your family? I'm like, of course I do. I have, like, vivid nightmares, day mirrors of my kids standing over my coffin and how it's going to affect them and, like, and them <clears throat> people knowing that they're Flex Wheeler's kids and that, you know, he killed himself and how that's going to haunt him. And I'm like, doesn't that stop you? And I'm like, no. It makes me want to hurry up and pull the trigger because only do I feel this while I'm alive. So everything that I feel, I can end it. And I, I can't, I can't stand how those thoughts are. Cause like dreams are so vivid, right? I mean, you have a dream, you wake up, you know, it's a dream, but it's like so strong, but it spurs you on to hurry up and do it. How miserable life is, you know, it spurs you on to hurry up and end it. But, you know, even though I, I understood what death is and taking your life and, and, and being a, uh, a believer, I knew that hell was, was, was coming for me. You know, the devil is such an amazing liar. You know, I would challenge myself and say sometimes, 
how do you know there's really a hell? No one's came from hell and said there's a hell. How do you know that's not just a lie? But that is a lie, because I do know there is a hell. Like, I know there's a heaven. But, like I said, I'm just, I'm so happy that after 30 some odd years of, of consistently trying and and being um, burdened with, with thoughts probably like five, 600 times a day of taking my life a day. That it's gone now. I mean, I know, you know, yeah. the devil's relentless and he'll be back. He'll reface himself and redesign himself and come at me a different way. But no, man, I'm good. Yeah, that just scared the mess out of me because one day we will all be dead and it's not going to be what we want. Mm. And, um, yeah. I don't think people realize just, first of all, you've lived one hell of a life. I, I have, even what I know of you and then when I do my, my research and I go, holy shit, fuck it off, Lex. You know, and this is just, that's getting you through your competitive career. And then after bodybuilding, you've gone on to do other things. But um, when I came to visit you in hospital about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just before you, right when you bought the gym, you guys picked a yeah. house and everything. Yeah. And you sat in a car. I'm so sorry. No. I kept telling Flex, go, man, go. He goes, no, she understands. Yeah. It's okay. No. I really enjoyed my time with you, Matt. Um, I'll never forget because it was... <laughs> It was uh, the presidential inauguration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that gosh. Day. I was texting with you he was, right after that. And I was saying I was with Flax. And um, even though I was there and you were there, you, you had moments of not being there, too. And you were in so much fucking pain. Yeah. And you were just... Again, because... We didn't take any pictures. We didn't talk about it. It's probably the first time we've talked about it. And I just wanted to tell everybody, but I didn't. I was just like, guys, this guy's daily life is nothing but pain. <sighs> nothing but pain. And I seen you going through all these, these, these struggles and just trying to maneuver your body into a more better position. And you're, you're just great at deflecting the pain. So tell me about you, Flex. Hey, the gym. Oh, I'm so excited. Welcome. I'm so happy you're here. And I was like, oh, that's great. But I'm here to talk to you. And he's like, ah, this is, um, you know. And you just didn't, you didn't make yourself, just, it wasn't like poor me. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm in a lot of pain. And I said, like, like on a scale of one to ten, like, what are you? Fucking eleven, and I was like, "Fuck, really, bro?" And then you were telling me about phantom pains, and you were talking about this, and I, and I just, when I walked out the hospital, I think you picked me up. Remember, I didn't even know how to start to tell you. I, I was like, I don't even. Yeah. How uh, how do I explain this, this situation of you being in hospital in so much pain and what you've gone through and how you're so positive, but. You know, your, your daily day is excruciating pain. I've been around Ronnie. I've traveled the world with Ronnie when Ronnie was just in the early infancy stage of his issues with his back. Mm. And then a number of years later, you know, I've seen Ronnie just jumping on the plane. And, yeah. and the same thing. You guys have that mentality of positivity. Tell me, don't worry about me. Yeah. Like, again, me and Ronnie were in Dubai and we hung out every day. I love Ronnie. Yeah, he's I, incredible. I fucking love Ronnie. Yeah. And uh, just seeing what you guys have donated to your craft and, you know, and where you are now in terms of um, your aches, your pains, and everything else, and yet you're still giving back. You're still being a beacon of light to other up-and-coming guys like Andrew Jack and giving your worldly advice to them and still staying positive. But... Underneath all them layers, just like everybody else, you bleed. And you, you still, you're not immortal. You know, we yeah. all look at you and Ronnie as being these, like, fucking icons and legends and untouchables. And, and, and again, when, when I was at the hospital, I was like, wow. You know, 
life is precious. You yeah, know? it is. And the fact that you had that mentality and you had that message for me, moving to Vegas, you were like, see, go for it, Flex. Yeah. Go for it. Look at you. Look and what you built. You you inspire me so much. You have no idea. You know, when I when I drive here and I'm coming around a big corner and I look up and see, you know, your sign, you know, I'm coming to your gym. I'm like, you know, look what he achieved. Look look what this kid that I met on my motorcycle, look what he's done. You <laughs> I know, should just throw the fuck off. <laughs> you know, but uh, you inspire me. I, I, I can get inspired by a three-year-old, you know. Um, I, I'm still learning. Um, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why some of us are given such challenges. But, you know, um, my son is really quiet, Darius. You know, he never... He never shows anything. He's worse than me. I used to call myself the world's greatest chameleon, you know, um, and he's greater than I am at it. And it bothers me because I can't read him, you know. Um, he never cries uh, or very seldom. I think I only seen him cry twice when I was in pain. But um, he hardly ever posts on my post or anything like that. I'm like, geez, man, how come you never comment? He goes, I do sometimes, you know, but... um, yeah. um I had put, you know, something about me going through pain and, you know, it's, it's been almost three years now. It'd be two years that I lost my leg in November and it's been about three years, uh, since I've been going through pain. I, I stay like at between like a seven and 10 all day long. Um, and, um, he had put on there, you know, God gives his greatest battles to his greatest warriors. Yeah. And I just like, wow, that's my son who said that. And I don't, I don't know why. But I know there's a reason, and uh, I'm thankful. And I, I remember when I made the decision for them to take my leg, it was either that or die. And before that, I was in a coma for 10 days, and my family was actually arguing and fighting um, whether to allow them to take my leg or, you know, they were like, no, you, you guys don't understand Flex. If you take his leg and he wakes up, we're all paying for this, you know. Um, but... I remember when I had to make this decision and I was like, just take it, you know, and it was just something that came over me. And I just said, you know, I'm, I'm built for this. Everything I've been through in life was, was preparing me for this moment. And, um, I just want to be a beacon of light for other people, you know, and no matter what I'm going through, there's somebody out there that's going through worse than I am. And, and even in the midst of, you know, when I'm just, sometimes I'm just in a fetal position, just crying because, you know, opiates doesn't do, doesn't take me out of pain. You know, it gets me high and I'm not a fan of being high at all. I'm just not a fan of that. You know, I'm a control freak. Um, but I'm like, you know, there's still somebody out there worse than me. Um, you know, there, there's somebody out there that don't have any legs or any arms. How could I sit up here and, and be, you know, a pansy and talk about, you know, only got one leg, even though it's it's tremendously unthinkable. I wouldn't wish it on my on my worst, you know, enemy. Just, you know, having to put your leg on, looking down there, realizing that it's not there. Sometimes I even almost get out of bed and I'm right leg dominant, and I lost my right leg. If you see any of my fights, I'm right leg dominant. Um, and I'll, I'll get down, to, I'll get ready to step down and I'll look down and realize that there's no leg there and I'll almost fall like, oh my God, or, you know, I'm just laying in bed. I'm like, how could something hurt so bad and never stop? And it's truly just mind bending. You look at like some movies, it depicts that if you put a person through pain for so long enough, they'll give you whatever you want. And I'm like, I even researched it for a while and I stopped researching it because I start seeing like the horrors that what happens to you mentally after enduring pain for so long. I'm like, okay, I don't want to know this, but um, I don't know. I'm just wired weirdly. I remember I was training with Stan's wife, uh, getting ready for Olympia, and um, she's incredibly strong, right? And uh, she was just staring at me. She goes, "How do you do that?" I go, "How do you do what?" She goes, "How do you just..." It'd be like you're exhausted after you're set and you're sitting there and I'm thinking like you're, you're going to get up and walk out and, and as soon as it's time for your set, you just, like somebody else comes out. I'm like, first, I can't acknowledge to what you're saying because if I do, it's, it's hard to come out of that. So I, I, I almost can't like acknowledge to what I'm going through because then 
I'm wired where it's like a toilet bowl effect that I call. It's like when you flush something down a toilet, it circles. Mm. And then it, my thoughts will just circle me and I won't be able to get out of it. So I, I can acknowledge to it and I, I'm easy. I'm, I easily forget things or I put things in a box and I never open it again. And I, I don't think that I'd be able to survive if I didn't have that ability because I'd be overwhelmed. But um, I'm just thankful, you know, that uh, I'm still here. We lost so many people, especially in the bodybuilding community. Yeah. And for me to be in a hospital and have had so many incredible bouts for him to still have me be here, there must be a reason and again, I need to respect that by honoring that I am alive instead of calling upon death upon me. Um, but I'm just honored. And, you know, it was it was the other day I went down to Fresno to watch my little brother uh, put on uh, this D1 uh, football camp for kids. And, you know, little kids were walking up looking, kind of just staring, you know, and I'd invite, come on, come on over. You want to touch it? You know, and it's just... I remember being that person, you know, we all have, we, we look at a person who's lost a limb or went through something horrific and we're looking at them, you know, kind of, and wondering what's their story, how did it happen? And I'm like, I'm that guy now. So I want to be inviting them to not make people uncomfortable. If I see them looking, I'll quickly say, hi, how are you? You know, or I'll joke like I was at the uh, fight uh, a couple of weeks ago and, um, I forgot who it was, but um, they were looking at it like, that's a cool design. I'm like, I can get you one if you want. Go, it's going to be painful. <laughs> I go, but I can get you one. And like, no, I'm it. good. You yeah. know, but yeah, just just switch it over. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't know why, but I'm thankful that I'm I'm given that ability to, to kind of uh, put things in, uh, in little storeway pouches that I never go and re revisit because I think I would be, I would be doing what you're doing now. Like, how could you? go through so many surgeries how could you still get out there how I'll, I'll be stuck yeah. and there are times like uh, yesterday mm -hmm. I wanted to go and do some things and I knew I had this coming up and it was one of those days where like my pain was just so piercing I just couldn't even I couldn't even put my leg on and sometimes I even argue with myself and say you know what I'm just going to stop wearing my leg and I'll just live in a wheelchair for the rest of my life because the pain so crazy but I'm like wow I mean I okay, this is a bad day. I need to just write this day off. And sometimes I have those days where I just have to write it off. Either I'm not getting out of bed or I just can't put my leg on or I can't leave the house. I was like, oh, I'm just praying that, you know, tomorrow's a good day. And then this morning I was laying in bed. I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. You know, I'm like at seven, I'll be able to make it. And end up, I, you know, I had back surgeries and I end up injuring my back, you know, because I certain things I just can't do. And in my back, I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to have to call in and tell Flex I can't make it. And I, I actually, no joke, I use my hemp. And I'm like, all right, you know, I'm always telling people, oh, well, this work. Let me try it again and see. And I'm like, God, okay, I can make it. But um, not to be long-winded, man, but just, you know, again, you know, I think we're all put here for reasons. I truly believe that with all my heart. I feel yeah. that the book is written. and We have a choice to live by that book that's written for us so we can break and go do what we want. Just like your, your incredible kids, you have a lifestyle and dreams of what you want them to be, right? That book is written for them. Mm -hmm. But once they get of age, whatever age that is, they have a choice of rewriting that book. Yeah. And I'm just thankful, and I'm just trying to live according to what, you know, I would, what I was put here for, and that's what drives me now, you know, and just giving back, you know, uh, just giving back, because I, I wouldn't be shit without such great people. I... I stole the saying from Sir Isaac Newton, you know, if you've seen farther than others, if I've seen farther than others, because I've stood on the shoulders of giants, and I truly have. I mean, I come from nothing. I'm a derelict. I'm worthless. I just had these great people who believed in me and seen more in me than i seen in myself. So if, if you can see me or you hear the name Flex Wheeler, it's only because of the great souls that I'm standing on that believed in me, you know, and I, I, I owe an honor to them. How could you ever repay someone, not with money? You pay them by, you know, um, by trying to just do your best. I think you've already done it, Flex. Because yeah, think of the millions of people who have been inspired by you. One of the photos that I had on my wall was that twisting back shot, kneeling twisting back shot. It was the Arnold Classic, 93. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my all-time favorite photos, all-time. Conditioning, symmetry, it was... 
what it's hard to believe that was even me. I don't even know who that guy is. I can look back and say the same thing, but it was. And if it wasn't for moments like that that played a part in, in so many gym goers, you know, upbringings, photos in the walls, new reels around the world, you've already done it, man. And so have you. I hope you. I hope you realize everything that you're saying to me. You have to, you know. You know, look what you've done, you know, retiring a uh, champion, the titles that you won, your business is not, not just the one. I didn't know that you won, you know, best businessman, you know, no. and now stuff like that. You Beautiful. can say that, but that, that's the same way as you do this. That's the same way I feel and, and uh, about what I've done. But you inspire me so much. You had an incredible gym, you know, back on um, – and uh, Miami, uh, not Miami, but Florida. Yeah. And then, you know, you came out here and done even better. And I'm like, wow, man, this dude is like, it just inspires me. When I walk into your gym, you know, and I see these pictures of you, even in your office and everything, your memorabilia is just, that my point is we just never really realized the people that we inspire or how we inspire them. They might walk amongst us quietly, mm. just being so inspired. But, you know, I just want to give you, as they say, give you your flowers while you're still here and just let you know Sam. how you inspire me, man. And, you know, it's, it's, I read some of your texts and like, you know, man, you know, I, I really thank you for doing this. And I'm like, does, does he even understand the respect I have for him? How could I not? Yeah. Well, for us to have you on this podcast as, as Doug has his own relationship with you, Ali has her relationship with you. And yeah, it is an honor. And, and, um, Talking about the evolution of Flex Wheeler, sitting right behind you here is two yeah. new businesses that I would love to hear about um, and how they got started and, and how it's helped you in your day-to-day. -day. Yeah, so, you know, um, like I said, I never believed in myself. And I remember Robin challenging me. It's like, you're comfortable with getting paid instead of going out there and making your own money, Damn. you know, and... Uh, Powerful. Yeah, you know, he hit me right in the mouth, which which real friends do, right? Not the not the wanna be, not the homies and buddies. They wanna they wanna stay your homies and buddies, so they don't wanna offend you, you know. But your friends will let you have it. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He goes, Flex, if if the if a company's willing to pay you that type of money, what do you think you're really worth? How much you think you can really make? Wow. I'm like, yeah, Robin, but. Wow. He goes, no, you just don't believe in yourself. You're comfortable being paid. You're comfortable being an athlete instead of it being a businessman. And I knew it. And I, I just, I didn't believe in myself. Uh, but so, you know, just being challenged and, and also being let go by companies. You know, um, I don't mind saying it. You know, when I was with Balco, um, um, Biochem, one of the highest contracts of the, at the time, I was being paid uh Back in 98, you know, $20,000 a month by them. And then I only had to do two appearances. And then I got paid five grand appearance after that. And I do like over 60, 70 appearances. So, you know, um, and I remember them telling me, you increased our sales by 98%. And they signed me through a three-year contract. So I'm like, wow, 98%. You know, I know I'm going to get re-signed, right? Yeah. You know, one, you know... Um, two Arnold classics under you guys and, you know, and took second twice in Olympia. And, you know, when it came down to it for a contract renewal, they're like, you know, we're going to resign you, but we're going to give you half. Oh, like, what do you mean by that? You know, I thought you said, yeah, you did. You increased our sales by 98%. You know, um, I go, well, why, why are you giving me half? Because we don't have to pay you that much anymore. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, we can go and hire, you know, hundreds of flex wheelers for the amount of money we're paying you. I go, you can't hire a flex wheel. He goes, yeah, but we don't need to anymore. You've helped build our name. Oh, so I'm like, wait a minute, really? Yeah. And I'm like, so if I would have asked you back when I first signed, one of the agreements in a contract would be, if I helped increase sale that you re-signed me for this amount of more, would you have done it? He goes, of course I would have. Hmm. I go, but I did it 98%. He goes, yeah, flex is not personal, it's business. I'm like, no, it's personal. Yeah. So I walked away from the money. But how many how many companies have we helped build to become multi million dollar companies and we're only as good as long as they need us. Yep. So I just got so tired of that. The last time that happened is when I was with um 
um, this company from Brazil. And, uh, you know, they had me, Lee Priest, and uh, Branch, uh, Warren, Branch uh, Warren. And, um, you know, they let us go, you know, and, uh, and we increased our sales, you know, tremendously globally. And they're like, we just don't have to anymore. And I was like, good grief. And they let me go on Christmas Day. Are you shitting me? Yeah. Merry Christmas, Flex. By the way, we're not renewing your contract. And I'm like... You know, and, you know, I was living off of that money. I'm like, good grief, man. I go, so I said, well, I might as well try to just invest in myself. So I came up with, you know, up. yeah, just came up. But that's, I mean, I hear them when they say that's business, but I, I don't believe in doing business that's that way. Business. That's yeah. fucking bullshit. Yeah. There's a way of doing it with respect. I agree. Fucking January 1st. Yeah. Well, Johnny second. Then, yeah, maybe. there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not the New Year's, but come yeah. on, let's be honest. That's yeah. ridiculous. So, um, you know, I when I lost my leg, I got put on disability. So I'm, you know, I'm legally and federally disab- disabled now. And I got my first check. Uh, it was a back check of over a year because there's so much paperwork to do. And they want to make sure I'm not lying about my, my problems I'm going through. And, um, I remember taking that back check and just saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to invest in my own company. So I got with All American EFX that owns All uh, EFX, a company I used to be a percentage holder in. And I said, hey, I worked out a deal with them and uh, they make my product. So, you know, it's just my way of giving back. And I just said, you know, I don't care how expensive it is, but my products need to be argumentably one of the best, you know, because I can't go back and create another flex wheel or I can't go back on stage. I, I don't have that platform no more. So um, I'm, I'm super excited, you know, to have my three products now. And, you know, people are like, why you only have three? Well, it's just me. It's just my money. You know, I'm 100 percent owner in the company and it's all my money. So I'm just trying to do things smart. So, you know, those are the three is lowest hanging fruit, as we say in business. Testosterone booster. They didn't put billions of dollars into teaching everybody that men go through a, a transformation of low T, just like women go through menopause. Yeah. Well, men didn't know it before. We didn't talk about that. So, said earlier, right? so they, they invested so much money, so that's a low-hanging fruit. You know, everybody wants to lose fat. You know, um, um, it's, it's one of the biggest things in the world, and it doesn't matter how much money you have. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Oprah Winfrey has more money than you can imagine, but yeah. we all deal with, you know, a fat problem, so that's another low-hanging fruit. And then uh, pre-workout, you know, everybody needs pre-workout, so I picked those three because they're the lowest-hanging fruits, and I was like, you know, First, I was going to call my my company um, Icon Nutrition, out of Iconic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one of my good friends uh, and colleagues, he was like, well, you're going to have to market what Iconic Supplement is. Yeah. You've already marketed what Flex Wheeler is. Why don't you call it True. Flex Wheeler Supplements or Signature Series? I'm like, yeah, but everybody did that. You know, LeBron does it. You know, Kevin does it. He goes, is a reason why. You know, that name is known already. So Mm -hmm. take that iconic photo of you. And um, I was like, all right, so I got to, you know, I knew my testosterone booster. I wanted to call it uh, T-Rex, you know, but such a powerful name, T-Rex, right? You know, it sounds like your cojones are like Mm -hmm. 10 pounds each, but it was taken already. So I was like, all right, we'll do Flex T and um, my fat burner. You know, I had trademarked all of them because... Being in a, the world of uh, nutrition for over 20 years before I did my own company, that's something big that companies do. You know, you'll take a billion-dollar company or a million-dollar company, and they'll jump on a little company and, and take their name mm-hmm. if they didn't trademark it. Now you're screwed. Yeah. You have all these products or shirts, whatever. Now you can't sell them because somebody else brought your trademark, and you didn't trademark it. So I trademarked Flex T, and I was like, you know, I want to spoof off for my name as much as possible. So... Flexcenerator, you know, accelerator means something hot and it accelerates. I'm like, all right, you know, flexcenerator, you know, that's cool, you know. And then, you know, foreplay, uh, you know, it's a pre workout foreplay. Come on, you can't, it's foreplay before you yeah. get in there, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm beyond it. It's a good formula, Flex. It's, it's amazing. Holy shit, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And my uh, NA, they really work. I mean, I, they, did. they, they, there's millions of commercials or infomercials that I did back when I was at EFX of why we created back then. It was called, um, 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 uh, 
forgot what it's called. I don't even want to give them props or whatever. But it was invented because of me, because of, of having low T, of using, utilizing yeah. sport technology all those years. I started when I was 19, so my body doesn't produce testosterone anymore. So we actually created that formula for me, and it worked. And that's how I had my daughter, Pearl, and everything. So they allowed me to take back that formula and kind of increase it a little really? bit more. Uh, which is amazing. Oh, wow. Jeff uh, Galini, the owner of uh, All American Pharmaceutical, allowed me to do that. And then a uh, fat burner, th- the truth is, there's nothing really special about fat burners. You only can do so much. The true fat burners, what we used, they're not legal, right? So. <laughs> He's talking about into caffeine flex. Yeah, right. Um, so <laughs> he has this, uh, this, uh, this ingredient. That is called Lysine 5. I was looking that, at that. Can you explain that? You don't, yeah, you so that's the, that's the true reason why it really works, other than some things in there that actually curbs your appetite, because that's yeah. a huge thing when you're dieting, uh-huh. you're, you're hungry. But Lysine 5, if I could explain it in layman terms, basically we did a study where we took people and we put them on a diet, and we gave them a diet, a great workout, and then we gave other people just a Lysine 5. And we didn't put them on a diet or anything. We told them, eat what you want. And they lost the same amount of weight. So what it does is, is it just doesn't, basically, it doesn't allow fat to assimilate in the body, right? When you eat fat, it bonds on to the body. It's the hardest to burn. Your body won't burn calories or muscle quicker than it does fat. So it just almost kind of, I count it like a, a joke, like liquid Drano. You know, you can take in the fat, but your body just don't hold on to it. And you end up defecating it through your receptor tank or, or peeing it out. Um, so that's a true reason why it really works. It just doesn't really allow the fat to bond on to you um and then my pre-workout foreplay is it's nothing really fancier than anyone else um i knew that i wanted to mix really easy i wanted to taste great and you know we take so many things like when you drink something it's like a bomb on your stomach so Mm -hmm. you know you got to drink like eight ounces or 12 ounces so i'm like i wanted to be able to mix in like four ounces so that you can take everything else and start and not have a gut bomb and then you know obviously um all American Pharmaceutical owns the uh, the trademark, and uh, they invented uh, Crocklin. So it has Crocklin in it, and you know there's been billions of studies of them trying to debunk Crocklin, but it's the only creatine that's stable in the body. We're actually accepted by the IOC. We're accepted by WADA, which is hard to uh, to Absolutely. do. So that's the other thing that's uh, that's special about that. But what I'm most proud about, and I'm kind of a uh, uh, jumping aboard, but we already know we're going to pass. Um, I'm, I'm doing this deal with the uh, UFC. Well, my products are going to be accepted by them, UFC. and um, they're going to be able to put it on their website and tell all the oh, fighters yeah. that they're able to use it. So that was just by being accepted by WADA. So the pharmaceutical plant, which All American is a pharmaceutical plant, so I'm happy that they have to go through toxicity tests that a normal nutraceutical company don't yeah. have to. Um, so they're already a water approved uh, uh, pharmaceutical plant. So I had to go through getting my products uh, water approved. So any time now we'll be able to release that. And uh, be, that's just so tremendous for me to be able to have that awesome. and um, yeah. and nice. stuff like that. So I, I signed this one UFC, UFC fighter. Um, his name is Nightmare. Um, he has a fight coming up. And then my biggest, I'm most happy with is. Um, Raymond Daniels, who we I've been knowing each other for for years, and I signed him uh, yesterday, um, and he's going to be one of my athletes. So, Great. you know, I've always said, you know, in some companies I've represented, you know, I just had to because of business. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know their products really didn't work. You know, but you know, <sighs> we're businessmen. You know, and um, but I knew when I started my own company, I just wanted to be legit. You know. There's a lot of companies out there that make products that have little things in it that the reason why it really works. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they're legal. You can sell them in GNC and all that. But I've always said to myself, you know, if my kids ever go into a a, a local GNC or or reputable name and and buy something and then have liver or kidney problems... your worst nightmare is not going to be walking through me walking through the door and wanting to sue you. Yeah. You're going to have another person walking through the door, yeah. you know. So I just don't ever want that to happen. So all my products are acceptable. They can be used by kids. My testosterone booster is a natural testosterone booster um, that, that actually just turns on your own system to produce the maximum amount. It's not inputting uh, testosterone into your system because when that happens, your body shuts down Absolutely. because it doesn't have to produce it anymore. So um, I'm excited about that, and I actually have women athletes who use it because it's a it's a it's a um, less 
um, formidable thing than actually taking a real thing. Yeah. And they don't have to ever worry about their body producing more testosterone I'm than it's it supposed too. to. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's secondary yeah. sex characteristics exactly. that they have to go through. So excited about that. And then um, probably even more powerful is the hemp company that I am with. We um, just got accepted. We have our website, which is uh, Hemp Helps, uh, www.hemphelps. Hemp Helps. Yeah, hemphelps.com. Uh, and um, I'll be short with that story because uh, I know it's been a long podcast so far. But um this guy chased me down last year at the Honor Classic England over and over and over, and I kept avoiding him, and I had my security team, like, get him out of here, and, you know, and he kept just kept coming back and kept leaving product every day, and I'm like, wow, this guy's persistent, you know. I envy him because I'm not that persistent. If you tell me no once, I'm going to tug my tail between my legs and run. You know, I'm not gonna, you're not going to see that. I'll walk away, you know, with my yeah. pride intact, but really I'm tucking my tail and running. I'm yeah. embarrassed, and – um it was the last day of the Honor Classic, and Farrar, the owner, you know, walked up to him, and he caught me. You know, I was getting ready to leave. It was a long day, and he's like, flex, please. And I'm like, I'm not that type of guy. I'm not wired that way where I could just say no. Yeah. I'm like, you got me. All right. He goes, five minutes, please. I'm like, all right. So I sat down. He told me his whole story, how, you know, fought for special service, uh, uh, spe special service uh, forces for the UK and, you know, how he dedicated his life to, you know, yes, yes. veteran people and all that stuff. Yep. And he took his entire pension and poured it into this because he oh, believed shit. in it so much. So I'm like, wow. So you got my attention now because I just didn't pour it all my money yeah, yeah, yeah. into my company and bankrupt myself, you know. So I listened to a story and I was like, listen, I mean, CBD is so powerful in the United States. I go, I mean, I Honestly, all of it's garbage. You know, my feelings I've had since I lost my leg, companies send me a thousand milligrams, two thousand milligrams, this, that, and other. None of it's done anything. So I'm like, you know, I just want to be honest with you. I don't believe in it stuff, man. He goes, please just try mine. It's different. You know, I had the patent. He told me about how it was really created back in like 1950. CBD was really created, what it stood for, and all that stuff, and why it doesn't work for it. And I'm like, nice game, you know. You know, nice game, sure. And he goes, please, you know, take, you know, take. I'm like, I, I got the last four that you left every day. You know, you don't have to give me more. I, I know it's expensive. So I just took it just to get out of him out of my hair. I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to use this crap. I know it doesn't work. And there I hurt my back, you know, so had tons of back surgery. If I bend over without supporting myself, I'll hear this little click and I'll hit the ground. I'm on my way to an emergency room. So um, I was brushing my teeth. And there in England, the sinks are a little bit lower. And I bent over, and I'm like, oh, God. And I almost hit the ground. So I'm sitting on a bed like, Jesus Christ, man, I don't want to be in a hospital here in England. And I looked over yeah. at this stuff, and I'm like, I know this shit doesn't work. I'm going to try it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. sat there, and, and it worked. And I'm like, okay, what does he really have in here? Because I know this ain't no CBD crap. Yeah, but yeah, long yeah. story short, I just couldn't believe it. And um, he's just like, you know, just, just text me back and let me know what you think. So I waited like two days um, and I text him back I'm like, man, I think you got something here, but I got to look into this more because I didn't try it. Everything. Listen, I take opiates and they don't help me. So I don't I don't believe how a natural product is going to help me at all. Yeah. You know, there got to be more to this. And um, I believed in it so much that I bought into the company. I'm one of the owners of the company. And wow. um, I, I we we've been all around the world, had a booth at the owner classic and. It's so amazing. We call it that wow factor because we'll put it on, you know, oh, I got elbow pain or joint or whatever, mm -hmm. and we'll give it to them and we'll just stand there within like 30 seconds and they'll be like, and it's just so powerful. And I mean, so again, for me, it's just, you know, it's so hard being out of shape. You know, we've been in shape all our lives and, and uh, you know, either you were a weekend warrior or a stud athlete in college or just beautiful in college or whatever, great physique or whatever in college. And, you know, now we're, we're older, we're fathers, grandfathers, businessmen, and we looking like what the F happened, you know, look in the mirror and we're honest. And so me having my company and then being able to assist someone, listen, does my product work? Yeah, but you got to put in work. Sorry. Yeah. It's not like the gun I carry where yeah. I pull it out, I shoot you, you see the effect. No, you got to put in work. You know, yeah. but it assists you. So I can assist people in doing that and and being in such tremendous pain and having something relieved. Now, I'm honest. My pain is just off the Richter scale. You know, it, it'd bring me down to like maybe a, a seven or a six, but I'm still dying. And sometimes it doesn't help at all. 
But for other times. A six is a 10 for somebody else. (laughs) Yeah. So for it to give me some relief, it it truly have saved my life because, you know, again, you know, when you, when you're under pain that way for so long, you just have dark thoughts and not to mention when you're already suicidal. So for me to have a product that, that will help a person not contemplate that because of pain it's just a way of giving back and like we're saying before it's good businesses i've had tons of companies and and big time people with money like let me back your play you know i'll i'll build a company for you and i'm like but i can't trust you you know i can't close my eyes and know that you'll do right by me you know um therefore i can't i can't do business so you know, I'm a small business now, but I'm happy I'm doing it on my own and I'm doing it the right way. And, you know, if I ever become a millionaire doing it, that's fine. I don't really care about that. You know, sometimes there's bigger things than money. You know, I've had uh, tons of money and I still try to crack myself. So, you know, I'd rather try to fight to be a better person, a decent person and do decent things by people uh, that will help them. I can be happy about that and feel good about myself because, I've already proven money don't make me happy. It's not going to stop me. Cars, jewelry, you know, women, those aren't going to stop me. But when you hear, which I'm sure you've heard millions of times, how you changed someone's life, it's like, how can you pay for that? You know, and, and the potential ripple effect of that person and going on and being positive and affecting someone else is so tremendous. There's Sometimes there's just things bigger than money. You having this gym, great. They pay a membership, but you're providing a service for them that you can take people and just help them to feel better about themselves. It's just weird, you know. Um, you can have a nice car and your car dirty. You don't think nothing of it. Get your car all waxed and cleaned up. You just sit a little taller. You feel better about your car. So imagine, you know, that's why I, I, I get it when people come in and they train really hard. And to us, it's like, oh, but they're walking around like they're like Mr. Olympia or Miss Olympia because they put in that work and they feel good about themselves inside out. So for me, I'll be able to have that, you know, is, uh, and be able to pay that forward. That means a lot to me, especially when I know for a fact other things don't bring me happiness and this yeah. is bringing me happiness. So that's, that's what you got to hold on to, right? What makes you happy right now, whether it's your kids, your grandkids. And, yeah. Um, on that note, I think this is something that's, that's very special, and then we'll wrap up the podcast. There's, there's two more questions I want to ask you. Um, as you've gone through a lot of depression and mm-hmm. suicidal thoughts, what advice would you give a young kid that, that has these thoughts? Is there, is there a place that you've turned to um, that has helped you? Um, obviously there's so many different outlets now with yeah. numbers you can call and yeah. what advice would you give somebody? So it's advice. I don't know that, uh, everyone can take it, you know, um, I truly, I'm truly aware that I'm still here because of my father in heaven and, um, all my source of strength and everything that I've been through and I go through is because of him. And I try to live a life worthy of him. At one time, it was me. You know, I felt I did everything. I did this. You know, I built this. And now I truly understand that, you know, a light isn't meant, been, a light isn't meant to be put underneath the bed. It's, been, it's meant to be put in the highest spot to light everything up. And, and he allowed me to have these incredible feats uh, that I have. But it was really meant to call people to him and the strength that he have and I remember uh, I was with my daughter Pearl and we were at an in and out and you, you can always you can tell too when someone recognizes you how they act from a distance yeah. and they trying to you know fill you out or you're approachable or not so I'll, I'll immediately I'll make eye contact with them and let them know it's okay and and it was the first time I really realized it it was a few years ago but um he walked up to me and he kind of you know said what he felt I I meant to him and how I helped him and and for some reason it dawned on me I didn't do nothing I'm a worthless person if I I allow or was able to for you to change your life in any aspect it was just a slight glimmer of what you see that's him in me that he allows you to see because what can I really do so you know I think the greatest lie in the world is a devil proven to people that he doesn't exist and that evil you know doesn't exist but i know it does so 
that's where all my strength comes from. I'm sorry if people are looking for some great wonder story, but no, I mean, you know, he allowed me to still be alive. Um, he allowed me to be who I am. He allowed me my weaknesses so that I could depend on him and be stronger. And, and that's where every bit of my strength comes from. Truly, if it wasn't for him, I would have took my life a long time ago. But, you know, he enabled me to be able to deal with that, to deal with everything I've been through and still be able to deal with that. And finally, he's taken away that that feeling I have, that desire of taking my own life. So it's truly him. And um, the relationship with God, uh, I refer to him. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's my dad. He's, he's my dad. Um, and um, like I said, I used to live a life where I felt it was me and I did things, but now I know, come on, man, you know, he allowed those things to happen. So that's where my strength comes from. And um, if you don't know him, I pray that you, you know, find some way of finding out and having a, des a desire of knowing more about him because, you know, he's Alpha and Omega, you know, in my life and uh, he runs everything. I'm not perfect, you know, I. I still sin every sin, every person does. And that's one of the, I think the biggest misconception. They think that if you try to be a Christian, you know, you're supposed to be sinless. No, we probably sin more, you know, because yeah. the devil is after us. He wants us to fall. But, you know, I think a true believer understands that we do sin. Everyone sins. The only difference is we repent and we ask for forgiveness yeah. where before <laughs> I did this. Yeah, I'm the man, yeah, you know, I. Cool. I did this, you know, so now I just realize that that's not the case. So that's a long story. And sorry if I hurt anyone's feelings that they were looking for some special story, but that's my special story. And I know yeah. it's a fact. And, you know, I live off faith. You know, when you get on an airplane, do you walk up to the pilot and say, let me see your degree. Prove to me your pilot. No, you go and sit down and you relax. Yeah. That's how I am about him. I don't got to question nothing. You know, I don't have to question anything at all. I believe I don't, I don't. When I inhale, I don't wonder if there's going to be oxygen. I know it's going to be oxygen. Yeah, That's how I believe in him. I know it's just, just as firmly as that. When you get in your car and you push that button or turn that key, you don't wonder if your car is going to start. Used to. You know, you live that life, but now we don't. Yeah, yeah that's faith. That's just belief. That's how strong my belief is in, and it's in him. I think as the older I get, I feel like my my, my belief system gets you know, stronger only because it's like, it's like, how the fuck did I get you? Yeah. I come from a small country in Wales and I'm now, you know, doing the what man. I'm doing. Yeah. And it's like it was in my heart. So obviously you ask for, for what you want and mm -hmm. you go for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's kind of one of them unexplainable things, be, but you'll never get the explanation until that's right. It's done, right? And people are, you know, I mean, like a lot of times they're like, if there's a God, how can you allow this to happen? How could He allow these things to happen? I don't know my father's business. I don't know my father's business. It's not my business. There's certain things that your daughter can ask you right now, and you look at a sweetheart. That's above your pay grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might find out one day, or you may never find out. Yeah. And if we have to look at our kids and we, we want our kids to respect that, I look at them the same way. I don't have those answers, but I truly feel that it's a cause and an effect. We wouldn't have empathy if we didn't see people going through things. It wouldn't yeah. trigger us to, to be emotional or have tears. And, and how could some of these things happen that are so, you would almost say ungodly, but he has a reason and he's beyond approach as far as questioning for me, who am I to question this person, you know, who designed us, you know, from the ground up and every inkling in us. And, you know, so I, I don't question. I live off faith. I'm good. If you don't, that's okay. Hey, man, you're entitled to, I don't, I'm not a Bible thumper. I don't run around bashing people in the head or anything like that. I'm comfortable. You have a choice. And he gives us freedom of choice, which we think is our choice, but he gave that to us. So. I'm comfortable. So anyone who don't believe like I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Respect my beliefs as you want me to respect yours yeah. and we're good. And if you don't respect my, I don't care, you know, as long as he does. So, well, listen, flex, it's going on two hours and 30 minutes. Ah, I'm this sorry. is probably No, <laughs> this is probably the longest podcast we've done. We do part one and part two. You can slice it no, up. This is all part one minute. <laughs> um, I think, you know, with wrapping this up, you will always, in bodybuilding history, go down with the legend, 
you know, like, your name is up there with Arnold. And, you know, when you think people think bodybuilding, Flex Wiener, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, it, whatever, whatever genre, what, whatever era you're born in, your name will always be mentioned. And, and that is, is crazy when you think about it, right? I, I, I'm not in your shoes, but if I was, you know, you're going down as one of the greatest of all time. And think of all the physiques and every single person that's ever stepped foot into a gym, ever wanted to put some muscle on. One of the greatest of all time. And now I, I have, you know, uh, a true friendship with you, you know, and it's obviously prior to even Las Vegas, but yeah. it's getting stronger all the time. And um, it's an honor to have you on here and, you know, fucking get me shedding tears, which yeah. has never happened. Um, because everything you said, you know, is in some cases and isn't relatable. But I, one thing is I, I, I respect the man that is sitting here and be, you know, in front of me and has gone through life. You've lived a life, you're here and you're still living a life and doing so many different things now with your new business ventures and, and everything else. And, 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 you know, from myself, I, I respect the hell out of you. Um, the man that you once were to the man you are now has all played a part in my life at some capacity, whether it was the photo on the wall to know us going to be taking a photo after this podcast. It's a wildlife full circle, right? Yeah. Where that guy, if I told myself when I was a teenager that, you know, two decades later, I'd be sitting here and that'd be my friend. And I'm talking to him about shit that he's going through whilst that photo was taken uh, unbeknownst to everybody because again you're untouchable you're the icon you're the flex wheel that everybody knows but everybody's human and what a remarkable story and that's why you're going to be going down as one of the greatest of all time is because of the story you lived and the man you are now and and uh yeah i just want to say thank you again for for coming on this podcast it's been one hell of a podcast and an emotional one a roller coaster <laughs> and one that um you know, again, I can't thank you enough for that. No, it's my honor. Like I said at the beginning, um, you know, Flex, so many people meet us and they, they say what an honor it is to meet us. But I think the true honor is is us just being accepted. You can go anywhere in the world damn near and be accepted because of your craft. That's to the honor going on someone else's soil. And I'm just wanting to shake your hand or my freaking chicken scrabble, you know, writing on their freaking shirt and they see a value in that. They, they instill value in us, you know, cause who are we? We're just, you know, we sit on a toilet like everybody else. We, you know, put our shoes and our pants on, you know, the way everybody else does. So the true honor is just really, really being accepted. The honor people of, you know, respecting you and honoring you so much that they want to come through your doors and training your gym that's the true honor you know the easy part is it being honored you know that's easy you know but i think that's just all what we strive for so you know someone as great as you and watching you from your humble beginnings and learning more about you now and you know remembering that kid i met when you know i was on a motorcycle and everything to seeing what you've done now and like you said is mind-blowing i would have never dreamed that you could achieve such greatness but here you are and have done that and you know, that just brings me full circle back to like, you know, come on, we're just human beings. How can we create greatness without greatness being bestowed, you know, to us, you know, from the beginning? So everything that you say, I, I, I ricochet back to you, you know, it's just truly an honor to see the man that you become, to see the father that you become, to see the husband that you become, just to see the so many layers of, of, of you as a businessman and everything and even now learning you know, about you and, and us having even more similarities and everything makes me have so much more respect for you. So, you know, the honor is truly all mine. It is truly all mine. And uh, I thank you for everything that you've been through that you fought against to become the person that you are. Even, you know, that incredible battle with just wanting to stick to your guns and like, no, I am flex because you are, you know, that's wow. I, I never knew that. That must have been so disenchanting to be known as flex your whole life and then people not acknowledging you because somebody else is using a name that's not even their freaking name you know i, I i'm ashamed um 
in one way. I'm honored that other people feel that great about me, but I'm ashamed that they would, you know, cause you, you know, dismay because of that. But you know what, though? You made me earn the, the fucking name. You're, you're already it. And like I said, we, we really don't it. understand, but we're, we're given greatness already. It's just what we really want to use. We can take that greatness and be the worst criminal in the world, biggest pimp, drug dealer, whatever. We have that ability. You know, we have to just make that choice and make it be about positive things. And some things you have, sometimes you have to go through hardship and, and, and learn lessons to really understand, you know, the value of how great things are when they're positive. So thank you so much. All of you guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Flex. Doug. Ali, appreciate you guys, Bronson, behind the scenes. And just want to say, please uh, follow my uh, my Instagram. Um, uh, what is it? Oh yeah, official Flex Wheeler. <laughs> uh, my uh, my other Instagram, you know, Flex Wheeler Supplements uh, Signature Series, and my new company Hemp, which is uh, Hemp Helps uh, on Instagram, and then our website. So thank you guys so much for all the support that I've had all throughout my fans, um, even my haters. Uh, I love you guys. You inspire and be better. And, um, you know, just um, if I can leave you guys with anything, just, wow, I know it's a, an old cliche, but, man, just how come we can't not just get along and love each other and just love life? It's said so many times. It's almost a joke now, but I truly believe in it. And I think, you know, uh, it's a possibility that it can happen when good men stand up against that, that iron and tyranny. So thank you guys so much. I love you guys all. Peace. Out.